so there was this girl, beautiful, uh, standard seven, tried my luck, didn't work. Mm. I was heartbroken, man. Of course. And I had to find an outlet to take out this poison in me because mm. I thought this is the life, love of my life. You know, <laughs> what am I going to do? I'm dying. <laughs> some organization in the arts was formed. So 5 million gets in. And when 5 million gets in, apparently some fat belly in the music industry says, and he's very serious. It's not like he's joking. It's yeah. not a joke. Yeah. So, King, King David Studio Podcast. Today I have someone who will, who will speak on music. He will speak on, on social culture. And as he, he defines his, what he does as a writer, I've known him for, for that long as someone oh now walandi pamirtsela tse tsa di sonta tsa sonta yeah yeah <laughs> you said it i did it well that's what people call i mean people uh, bump into you eh shwa shwi ke bonga ni mahlangu everybody is a writer and uh, it's that title I'm going to forget, but I'll record it later. Social... The writer and social cultural commentator. What is a social cultural commentator? Well, you see, I, I found that, you know, people w would say, you are a music writer. Mm. And that sort of boxes you. Yeah. It means you just write about music. And I realized over the years, I don't just write about music. Mm. You know, I write about music and I like music that has social cultural commentary in it. Yeah. That's why I will throw, um, uh, I remember Gloria Bosman uh, at some point I posted uh, a Pusa Kemisi song, mm. you know, and, and Gloria says to me, Oh, yeah, lo maskandu ako. <laughs> says to you. <laughs> yeah, he says to me, Oh, yeah, tanda lo maskandu ako. Why, what had you done to get that reaction from her? No, that's because I had uh, quoted Pusa Kemisi a couple of times. Quoted ah. Begumuz Lutuli a couple of times. Okay. Because when you listen to their music, there's a lot of social cultural commentary there. Mm -hmm. it, it, it's something that speaks to me. Absolutely. So as long as, you see, the music can be nice in terms of vibey and it's cool. Mm. You know, I, I, I like that OJ song, I love music just as long as it's groovy. Yeah, that's it. You know, so there must be a <laughs> groove there. Groove in terms of music, groove in terms of the message, mm -hmm. groove in terms of the art. Yeah. You know, so it doesn't matter what genre it is. So that's why you throw, him, you throw me in my piano I hung out with a, a, a piano artist for a good yeah. 30 minutes yesterday yeah. in the morning and they start grooving that early. It was yeah. around 10 in the morning and they were already grooving so early on a Wednesday. And then, and then you sit there and then uh, somebody throw, throws you uh, Frank Sinatra or... Uh -huh. or Sebastian Bach. Jeez. You know? <laughs> and and I always say I don't I don't know much about genres of music. I, I know a lot about music. Yes. Because, as yeah, because genres are just genres. Music is music. Mm. Genres come and go, you know. Mm. Uh, music, it doesn't matter as long as you love music, as as long as you feel it and you understand, you can connect with the yeah. heart of the artist who was putting that thing together. Irrespective of genre. Irrespective of genre. Music is beautiful. Yeah. Music is so I I I've hung out with a with a, you know jazz guys mm -hmm. jazz guys <laughs> ah, you must just you must be exclusive I can't I can't afford to be exclusive yeah as a writer I can't afford to be exclusive mm. because a different genres speak a different language about different situations in of in, course in different places absolutely that's just how music is done yeah, yeah. And so when you write um, it helps when you I call it my academic referencing. Mm. You know, um, you know, academics will tell no, you. No, no, yes, 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 a quote is so and so and yeah, so and so. You know, they will yeah. make reference to a yeah. book and a yes, another research. Exactly. Yes. So I do a lot of music referencing mm. in in my writing. Yeah. Uh, I tried the academic referencing. <laughs> you, you, you know, I, I found it to be very boring. Yeah. Um, By the way, it's, it's my favorite type of referencing. Yes. Academic I reference. <laughs> you know, I tried it, you know. Uh, university staff, mm. you know, um, and you do these assignments. And mm. I still like it because... According to uh, yeah. Ongani Matlangu, yes. uh, uh, page so-and-so, uh, article this and that, yeah. uh, he says, <laughs> you, you know... <laughs> that uh, South African music is rubbish, yeah. however it has potential. Yeah. And then you carry on. It still works. It has its purpose. Uh. You know, it has its purpose. You can't just dismiss it. Dismiss of course. It. it has its purpose even in the way I, I want to write. You know, I can then go to a formal report mm -hmm. and then reference 
uh, that report. Mm. But it's so nice referencing music. Mm. You know, Nick? it's unique as well. It's very different. Yeah. To say, uh, Anita Baker once said. Exactly. <laughs> you, you know, uh, you just quote a lyric, mm. you know, in your writing and you sound smart. <laughs> <laughs> reminds, like me, reminds me of that Chris Tucker. Um, <laughs> what's that movie? Where he, he does uh, Barry White. Yep. You're my first, my well, last, well, yes, my uh, everything, my everything, and it sounds like oh, this guy is so poetic, and uh, <laughs> and the next, and the next reference very, very wide. <laughs> so music, music makes you look like that. Yes, in fact, in Frank Sinatra's book, the writer says, um, Frank Sinatra said, said in in his music, he said things that guys wanted to say to girls. Mm, they just didn't know how to. They just didn't know. So. Uh, Frank captured it so yeah. well. <laughs> and he also said things that girls wanted to hear. Mm. You know? No wonder he became a favorite. You know? So I'm like, you see, music will make you look like you're smart. You know? <laughs> <laughs> or romantic. Yeah, what's, anyway. your, what's your background in, in, in terms of uh, your interest in writing? Where did it start? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it happened in 19... Uh, oh, I don't even know what 19... I would say in standard seven. Mm. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> in in trying some... trying to trace it. Yeah, when you say standard, we already know. Right? Yeah, in nineteen something. Yeah, yeah. Give you, yeah. Mm. You know, so it was in nineteen ninety seven, and interestingly enough, it had to do with a girl. You know what? Yeah, you know, you know how about Hannah? Mm. <laughs> it either brings out the worst or the best in you. Yeah, yeah. You're just not my my type. My type. And I used to read a lot of Isuzu novels. Okay. And um, uh, and. And, and short stories and po and poetry. Dibiza oh. uh, and all that. And I used to like the way they. No <laughs> you know. I like, like the way they put words together, and you know, there's this poem, and you read, and it speaks to a girl, and like I wish I could say this to a girl. Mm -hmm. So there was this girl, beautiful, uh, standard seven. Tried my luck, didn't work. Mm. I was heartbroken, man. Of course. And I had to find an outlet to take out this poison in me because mm. I thought this is the life, love of my life. You know, <laughs> what am I going to do? I'm dying. <laughs> so I started writing my emotions and feelings about what was going on mm. at the time and um, started writing and writing and writing. And and I, I at the time, I didn't notice that I'm a writer. Mm. It was just writing because I'm, you know, and at school, composition and letter, I never used to get less than 80%, yeah. whether English or Isuzul. Mm. Never under 80 I, So that's why I accuse my Isuzulu teacher, uh, because we're still in contact, and say, I accuse him. I say, well, now you failed me. You should have told me right there and then to forget about everything. And focus. And, and, focus, on, and focus on writing. Mm. I was also mad about radio. Really? Really mad. Wow. Oh, I didn't know that. <laughs> I was mad. I'm still mad about radio. Yes. I'm mad about radio. That's why, for me, it's theater of the mind. That's mm. what I know, you know? Because somebody behind the microphone has to create that picture. Mm -hmm. Writing is more or less the same thing. That's when you write, you have to create that picture in the mind of the person who's reading, mm. listening, you, you know. Um, so, you know, Kansas City, Ooh. you know. Uh, you're talking legends. Yeah. Oh, man, Shibaba, do Shibaba. Ah, uh, you're talking uh, legends. As, as cool as Summer Breeze. <laughs> oh. Uh, as soft as baby's touch. You know. If it's good, it's, it's grand. grand. <laughs> you know. So, you know, radio dramas. Yeah. Yeah. Um, all those, the in, why they were picking interest in me, it's because I think those things were trying to show me that you are a storyteller, you, mm, are, you know, mm. um, try to focus more on that. But, you know, uh, you, you keep getting told that, no, doctor, lawyer. The regular. You know, the regular. Yeah. You know, that there's no money in this thing. Voiceovers. Mm. Uh, do you remember that? Uh, ba, 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 da, 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 yes, that's the one. That's the one. Mm. You know? The action satisfaction. Yes. Yes. So I'm trying to give a broader scope of where mm, I'm coming from mm. with, with, with this thing. So I was crazy about radio. I was writing, I was it it, it, it just or just poetry. I was writing poetry in Sizulu, Sizulu yeah. mostly because of yeah. that incident. But <laughs> but I was modeling myself around Boti Pizet and Tuli, Bungam Silema Kambi, all those writers. But, but, but when did you admit to you to your writing? It was after, te your teacher didn't tell you. No, he didn't. Yeah. It was after failing as a salesperson. Oh hell! <laughs> yeah. was, Where? Which company? I was miserable. It's a it, it, there's a you know this company. There's a company called uh, Home Choice. Yes. 
there was a competitor to that company called Sweet Dreams. I don't know that. Yes. Yeah, I know Home Choice very well. Yes, Home Choice was a big deal uh, even back then, mm. 96, 97. Yeah. Big deal. So there was a company called Sweet Dreams. It was also so selling to Vate Sets mm. and, and all that. But theirs were, you know, top class yes. type of thing. Fancy and expensive. Fancy and expensive. Now imagine a boy from Legationing mm. Kuku selling that expensive thing and trying have, to sell that and you have to know it you have to know it yeah. <laughs> basically brand wise you don't match yeah, you're off brand as they say yes you're off brand <laughs> and you're finding it difficult to sell this thing mm. you know, because maybe they look at you and they're like these things are you know, like, <laughs> but did you steal this yeah. to come and sell it to us you know, and also I'm not convincing mm. you know because I don't understand this thing of lying to people, you know, promising <laughs> things that are not there. I don't see the point. So I was miserable in this mm. thing. So I said to myself, All right, let me leave this thing. And I decided my father had uh, two books that he liked to read, The Magic of Thinking Big mm -hmm. and The Power of Positive Thinking. Yeah. And um, I decided, okay, I'm not going to do anything. I had no responsibility back then. I'm not going to do anything until I actually found, find mm. the natural talent not what I want to do, mm. but the natural talent that when I start doing that, mm. I just lose myself. That's it. So I wrote a couple of things down and I started scratching, acting out, you know, all. But all of these things were around media. Mm. Mm. And then it occurred to me that I have this tendency of, you know, you walk in the streets and you see a billboard and you start reading aloud. Mm. That advert. <laughs> yeah. And somebody looking at it, oh, this one is mad. <laughs> but for me, it just happens, you know. Yeah. And I'm enjoying this thing. And then a penny drop and I said, ah, news reading. Ah, okay. News reading. Yeah. So I, it was a time when Kai FM was, was starting, 97. Mm -hmm. So I pick up a phone. You know, the Saturday Star used to have, at the back, they used to have radio columns. Yeah. You know, and radio adverts and stuff like that. So I see there's an advert here, uh, radio presenters, production. They were looking for stuff. Looking for stuff. Yes. So when I look at that thing, to me, I see Kaya FM. There. I missed that ad because I have applied. <laughs> oh, you missed it? I clearly I missed it. I didn't you, see it. You missed it. <laughs> I could have applied for a job. You know, so I <laughs> phoned this number. I see Kaya FM. So mm. I, I phoned this number. So no, I see you have auditions here. I'd, I'd like to come and audition. Mm. Yeah. No, 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 it's fine. You can come and audition. I'm like, Whoop. just like that. Yeah. You know, come and audition. So I'm like, oh, Kaya FM. So, so they give me the address. I go there, Hyde Park, mm. fifth floor. You know, it does look Kaya. <laughs> you know? And I get up there, it turns out it's not Kaya. Yeah? It's a station called Ken I FM. Oh, yes. Kenny FM. Yes. It's just as used to be. There. Yeah, I know, yeah. 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 A long time ago. Yes, yeah, Kenny FM. Oh, so this is not Kaya, but I thought it was Kaya. Anyway. <laughs> well, you're here. I'm here, you know. I might as well go through with this. So I get in audition. And I say to me, hey, we like, we, mm. you know, we like what, uh, what, what you can do, you know. Yeah. We think you can do radio. Mm. All right. So we start the training. We do um, the the whole shebang, radio mm. broadcasting, research. You know, I've never gone through that training. You know? With with yeah. so many years of radio. <laughs> well, if it's in I had you, a different type of training, but not not the formal. Oh, yeah. Yes. So we did that training. There were about seven of us. Mm. You, know, you know, Hyde Park, you know, there are white kids there. Mm -hmm. Kind of kids. And we are three blacks. Yeah. You know, so they have to choose out of the seven. They have to choose three uh, that make it. Jeez. As in, you will have a show on weekends. Uh, um, yeah, basically that was the offer. All of us would have show weekends, graveyard. Oh, that and that. move up the ladder with time. Yeah, that kind of stuff. So I'm panicking because you know I listen to these other guys. You know, <laughs> Model C accent. H. Uh, Nagi accent. Where are you from? Which township? Uh, I'm from. Uh, I grew up in Kempton Park in the farms. Okay. Uh, home That's is a long time ago. Okay. Long time ago. Uh, home is Dakani. Okay. But not, I stayed in Kaka Hong at some point. Okay. Hong at some point. And then I spent five years in Guandebele doing high school there. Okay. So you're an Eastern boy yes. who then, yeah. Yes. So, okay. so my nearest township was Tembisa. Gabon. Yeah. Yes. So I'm. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yes. All right. Go ahead. Yeah, my accent, it doesn't quite fit in here, you know, because what's over my Of course. You know, yeah. way, you know, the mm. colors, this, you know, that. Yeah. Uh, first class color. Uh, when I was I'm not going to make it here. I don't know if you know Anna Mary Bezdrop. No, no, no. She wrote the book, uh, Winnie Mandela, the Winnie Mandela book. Yes, I know that book. I just didn't know yeah, who she wrote it. She was my lecturer. Yeah. 
Okay, for that for that for that training, yeah. she was the one doing the training because she had recently come back from Bosnia. Was okay. was reporting live from yes. there. And Jeez. So she was doing the training. Sarajevo. She had proper yeah. broadcasting. Yeah. So yeah. so and and I did research on um, uh, on uh, affirmative action. Mm. That was my subject for for presentation. Okay. For the final uh, presentation. So I did research on affirmative action. Interesting stuff. It was not a new thing when it happened mm. Uh, mm. at the time because the African elders had implemented affirmative yeah. action. So I did a presentation on affirmative action, did a bit of that research, mm. uh, put it into a presentation. Lo and behold, I was one of the three. Hey, uh, you made it. <laughs> I made with it. With your Gatle Hong accent. You know, with my Gatle Hong <laughs> accent. I also tried TV. They told me that my accent is too African, so I can't, yeah. I can't make it. Amazing and, there was a time like that. Yeah, and they said to me, we can actually take you for uh, speech therapy, you know, so that you speak. <laughs> uh, Basically, we can we can help you speak with a twang. Yes. That's what they were saying. And back then, when I was still, hey. this was an opportunity for me mm. to crack it on, on, on television. But I said, no. Wow. Idiot. You know? Well, you were true to your principles. I said, no. Because... <laughs> I mean, it was like, no, we like your, you know, mm. your presentation, you know, but we want to work on the voice you yeah. know, so that you speak. Uh, <laughs> hey, hey. <laughs> I was like, no, I'll pass. Mm. So I passed. So I get a show on weekends and what happens is, so I'm eager to learn more about these things. So mm. I come in during the week and I say to the, there was a CEO then. Hey. You know, CEO. So I say to the, there was a CEO, a station manager. So I say to the CEO, Look, man, I, I'm looking for more opportunities. Mm. Is there anything I can do here during the week, you know? Mm. So, you know, there's no money. I said, no, well, uh, at least if I got transport, you know? I just want to learn a bit more mm. behind the scenes, news, producing, and that stuff. So they said, okay, fine, come. So I start doing that. Okay. News. Eventually, I become uh, one of the producers. And then uh, <laughs> news editor, music manager. Do you know that's the trick to... A lot of jobs, particularly in the media space. Yeah. To just hang around. Just hang around. Yeah. You know. Just be yeah. here. Just be here. <laughs> There's a day where somebody won't be here. And then. And you'll fill in. The Pop Mabena thing. Whether it's Bob or yeah. it's, uh, uh, who is Romeo Kumal. Or yeah. The stories are pretty similar. Ah, yeah, they, <laughs> they are the same. Because somebody's yeah. not going to show up. At some point. Show business. And you're here. And you're here. Yeah. So, and then. So I'm there now. I'm, I'm in the music. I'm in the news. I'm in producing. I am also have a show on the weekends. Yeah. So I'm doing all these things. So I get invited to the launch of, I see you have Busim Klong or somewhere here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah Busim is behind. Yes, the launch of Eben Zulu yeah. Yeah. At, um, in Newtown. Mm. So I get there. I bump into Sandy Lememele. So I used to yeah. read the Sunday World. Oh, yeah. Yes, he was at the Sunday World and he had moved from City Press. So mm -hmm. he, he had a column, uh, Mamelang Memele. So I used to read that column from time to time. So I, you know, so, so Memela, being Memela, hey, who are you? <laughs> so we talk and then I he tell him. my boss at some point. That's yeah. <laughs> so I tell him what I do, you know, I'm on radio. And, and says, he says to me, you know what? Because he's got senior writers there, you know, people mm. from university. You know, <laughs> writers, serious writers. Yes. So they don't want to do, there was something called Goomba. Uh -huh. Goomba was a gig guide listing. Okay. So then you know they, they don't. Oh yeah, it's it's boring. Yeah, no man, we don't. Yeah. So because well, you have to call around and find out. Yeah. Where is so and so performing? There's no creativity. There's there. nothing, it's yeah. just compiling yeah. stuff, you know. So Memela says to me, you know, I'm looking for somebody to compile that gig guide. Mm. Are you willing to do that? I'm like, well, let's give it a shot, you know. <laughs> so I give it a shot, but when I'm there and I'm I'm watching these guys, they're writing and all that. At that moment, I don't remember that I used to write at school. You know? mm, that, yeah, that oh, memory yeah. is That memory is... Uh, There's a complete disconnection. But I'm writing on radio because I'm writing news. Mm. You know, but still, it's not... You're not a writer in your head. No, I'm not. Time. I'm yeah. just, you know, trying to find <laughs> myself. So there was a guy called uh, uh, Musicians, George Piri and Gampi Moto. Mm -hmm. They recorded an album called Acha Masimango. Mm -hmm. so I used to stay in Yoville in a, in a room. So George Piri stayed not too far from me. And I used to go to these music yeah. performances, events, and all that. And I used to know Karabo Mutijuano, who's at Share yeah. Sounds, you know, yeah. Nana. Yeah, you born. Know, so I used to go to these music mm. events, things. And I realized that these places where I go, they are not journalists. No. So I'm like, and then Kampi Moto and John Shapiro, they are tight. They are tight. You need Congo and, uh, and uh, Malawi. Mm -hmm. It's a combination of Congo and Malawi. And the music that comes out of that, it's explosive. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, let me interview these guys. I've never done an interview in my life. So I interview them, <laughs> write the story 
on my Pentium 2. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Write the story. Keep writing it because remember, in my head, I'm not a writer. So mm-hmm. I keep writing this thing, polishing it, and I feel it's ready now. Mm-hmm. So one day, Mamela says to me, again, that thing. Mamela says to me, Ish, you know, I have a gap. I need a story. H. You see, same. You yes. said it. I yes. said it. You have to be there. Yeah. says, <laughs> do you have anything? <laughs> I'm like, no, I have this interesting story about Kampi Mot and George Piri. They're from Malawi, Congo, and they beautiful music. I've done an interview, done a story. Send it. I send the story. How? Sunday, I look at the story. It's exactly as I wrote it. What? I'm like, oh. Okay. <laughs> so I start writing. That was your first article. That was my first article. Yeah. I still have it, you know. Yeah. So I start writing more. Stories start appearing. So I enroll for a, a, a journalism course. Mm. Uh, so I went to IAG. I went to a couple of colleges. So mm. I enroll. I start. I do the formal thing Jeez. of journalism. Yeah, you, you have know, to tick uh, that formal box. Yes. So to fast forward and then I go to University of Free State to do business management and leadership. Mm. But then Fela interferes and say, teacher, don't teach me nonsense and I leave. <laughs> <laughs> You're influenced by a musician. You see this thing of coaching musicians? You know? You can't teach. <laughs> so I leave because I had an altercation with an economics lecturer. Yeah. You know, uh, we're discussing economics and then I mentioned something about apartheid, how the apartheid nationalist government used to um, have a big say in in the economy of mm-hmm. the country. Mm-hmm. Because we, I was arguing the point that you cannot separate economics and, and, politics. and politics. These yeah. things go hand in hand. Sure. Politics have a lot to do, influence a lot of economic moves in mm-hmm. the country. So the lecture says to me, I'm not interested in politics and, uh, and and this is what I'm saying. This is what's going to happen. And I'm like, no, I didn't come here for this. And this is this is now post-apartheid. Yeah. This is now. No. No. Yes. Now, um, hey, man, what lecture is that? Yes. <laughs> this is what, 2015, 16. Yeah. Somewhere there. Yeah. You know? So my mind is already polluted. Uh, with know? all sorts of stuff. Because I've read a lot. Uh-huh. So I'm going there with too much stuff in my head. Mm. In that I'm not just going to take what you give me because I know something else. Yeah, I I, I had a little argument with the marketing teacher. Mm. Uh, who who <laughs> you was, just knew too much. No look, Rotman, my classy. Oh man, the Rotman is that show. Maraka fella, we were Rotmans. I was actually okay. younger there. Yes. Seven is one at some point was part of the class. Wow, listen to that. I'm name dropping now. <laughs> you know, I always hear people listen because the names drop a lot. <laughs> Charles Barkley. <laughs> So <laughs> I'm name dropping. <laughs> you make reference to a Charles Buck. <laughs> but I like Wilson, man. He's great. He's a he's a theater of the mind, man. No, he's one of my favorites. Yeah, without a doubt. And I when when he met uh, Charles Buckley, I was with him. Ah. I took the picture. Nice. Oh, you oh, you're the cameraman. I'm the cameraman. <laughs> it was a Charles Buckley picture. <laughs> That's wonderful. Yes. Yeah, so I I so I did Almost three years of business management and leadership at yeah. the University of Free State. Jeez, you were this close. Did you finish yeah. it? No, I haven't. Ah, Diman, you were this close. Yeah, but you see... I you bet m- you can still get credits for that stuff. Yeah, I can. Yeah. But you see, the thing is, I'm messed up by the reasoning. Mm. The reason I went there, it's not because I wanted the qualification. I wanted to experience university. Ah. You know? And uh, because I'm not a job seeker. Mm. Mm. I... Uh, you, you create your own opportunities. Yeah, I create seems. my own opportunities. So I don't see that point. Mm. And uh, writing I do every day. So I teach myself writing every yeah. day. So it, it changes every time. And, and So I was at that space where I just wanted to understand the business element of things mm. and, and get, you know, get a grasp of yeah. what's going on there. So I had reached a point where I thought, I don't think there's much I can still learn mm. in, in this thing. And But that door is still open. If if I'm triggered by something else, I'll probably go back and and, uh, and try something else. Yes. You know? But I'm not doing it for a job or anything. I'm just doing it for fun because I like reading. Mm. And I like mm. learning uh, from different spaces, yeah. you know, because it, enha- it, it enhances my storytelling. That's true. Uh, you have we have diverse references. Yes, I have yeah. diverse uh, references. So yeah. that's why I say I'm a social cultural commentator. Yeah, because I pick up a, a, a psychology book now and read that uh, until the end. Mm. A philosophy book, read until the end. A history book. Yeah. Uh, I mean, there's a book I like to quote: the the Summer of Blood, mm. the Revolution of uh, uh, I think 13, 1370 in Britain. 
Jeez. Bloody, bloody revolution. <laughs> yeah. So I read broadly. Yeah. Um, but I love music. So so you, you found a way to bring your passion for writing and your passion for music together. Yes. And and that's the stories you've been telling yes. for quite a while now. Yeah, for quite some time. So 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 as I say, I mean it's over twenty five years now that mm. I've been doing this thing. So I've reached a point where I write the way I want to write. So Steve Bigo now also messed me up. Mm -hmm. so I, I, write, I write what I like. I write what I like, when I like, when I feel like, and what I like about. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so so if you go... <laughs> no, it's just, it sounds like it's like... <laughs> if he writes what he likes when he feels like... <laughs> ah, it's freedom of expression. Yes. We are creatives, you know. Mm. And when you have that opportunity... Look... I had a mini health scare last year. Yeah. Yeah, right at the height of COVID. Jeez. And I spent about two weeks. You, know, you see, I'm telling you this for the first time mm. in public. I had a mini health scare. I spent two weeks in hospital. And at that time, during that two years. Mm. Two weeks. Two years, two weeks. Yeah. During that two weeks, you know, I had never been so peaceful in my life. Oh, nothing mattered. Yet, you, yet it was called a health scare. Yeah. But you were... No, it was a mild heart attack, uh, not heart attack, but stroke. True. But I was at peace. Why was and that the case? Nothing mattered. What brought about that peace? I worry too much. About? You know that song? You worry too much, don't give up. Uh -huh. I worry too much about a lot of things that happen around me, uh, uh, that happen in this country. Mm. And there's a lot to worry about. Ah, there's a lot. And <laughs> and and at that point, it dawned on me that I'm killing myself mm. by, by worrying about things that actually have nothing to do with me. No. Well, maybe they have nothing to do me, but with, with me, but as a writer, as a medium, I I see it, I feel it as a duty to try and reflect on these things to say, but hang on, this is not right. Mm. The mm. classic... Example will be the story of the National Arts Council. Yeah, uh, that you, you write extensively on, yeah. on that on that subject. I've already written about fifteen stories on that, on, on the National Arts Council. <laughs> in you a, write extensively in less than two months. They 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 would probably think Diman was arbat, and it has nothing to do with that. For me, yeah. it pains me when people who claim that they have the interests of artists at heart, they use the name of artist to loot the artists. Huh. Because there's money that goes into the National Arts Council to try and help improve the lives of artists. Yeah. Uh, be it uh, whatever they want to present in a community, be it a production, whatever it is. Mm. You know, mm. so that, that money is there for that. But you have people there who seem to think that they're doing artists a, a favor. favor. Yeah. When they're actually not. And it's, yeah. for me, it touches me in my studio because I see myself as an artist mm -hmm. and I hang around with artists and I listen to their stories, the struggles that they go through, which they should not be going through. Mm -hmm. And I think it takes us to why you called me. Yeah. yeah because we are told that uh, the music business in this country is in decline. True. Well, it's not. Mm -hmm. The recording, let me say, the, the, the distribution of CDs is in decline. It's Naturally. It's dead. Technology that's technology. changed. Transformation has come in. The space has moved into digital now. Yeah. Uh, record companies have their hands in that pie mm. of digital distribution of music. Yeah. So there's no, there's no death there. Mm. Uh, they continue to make money in that space. So that's why they also bought a lot of these small independent companies. So they have a huge catalog now. Yeah. So the artists who say they are not recording more now, it's not because the industry is declining. Mm. The managers have a huge catalog of stuff that they've bought. Now they want to make money out of that stuff that they have before you add. Give me, give me, give me a scenario. Because mm. uh, you and I have been around long enough to remember yeah. the Kwaito era. Yes. Uh, and, and, that, and what was happening then. Yeah. And then fast forward to what had happened in hip hop and so forth yeah. and so forth. And now we're dealing with um, a Ma piano scenario. Yes, yes. Give me a scenario of what was happening then when we had uh, as entertainment uh, yes. do and we had yes. uh, kind of king, yeah, 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 yeah Atama triple, nine. Yeah, and triple nine and all of those yeah. things. Kalawa was Kalawa the beginning GSP, of Kalawa. Yeah, yeah. And there were small little companies. Wabula. Exactly. There you yes, go. Yes. Wabula, you must yeah. I remember Bula yeah, and yeah, all of Chisa. that. Mm. Chisa. Yes. Give, me, give me a scenario of at that time, when opening a record label seemed relatively easy, there were many, 
Mm-hmm. And 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 what has happened then in relation to this to to the example you just gave now when you said eh, it's a collection of them now in one pot instead of yeah. hundreds yeah. of them all over the place. Well, you still have a lot of independents. Mm. It's just that they are not in the mainstream. There's a guy I was talking to from Pretoria. It, uh, it's called uh, uh, Bonafide Bill. Yeah, he does hip hop and he's quite tight music, you know. Uh. And he's doing his thing. You know, there are many others who are doing his thing, mm. their thing, and. Just because the system, it's like the informal traders. Just because the system cannot detect them. Uh, it means they don't exist. It means they don't exist, yeah. but they exist. There are a lot of independents out there. Is this like they are smaller, they are struggling. Uh, you know, it's not like, because remember, when you talk about Kalawa, Bula, Triple Nine, Triple Nine all of those guys. So those were the three. They, there was a focus yeah. on that. You yeah. must also remember that thing happened at a time when black economic empowerment was was a big deal. Mm. You know, so record companies had to be seen to be, you know, yeah. uh, you know that type of thing. So it it was relevant at that point. Mm. If you look at now, black economic uh, economic empowerment is a dying thing. Mm. I mean, uh, the DA talks about. Uh, uh, Scrapping BE mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and 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 they still hope to get votes. Anyway, yeah, different yeah. subject. They talk about scrapping that. Yeah, there's not much excitement or defense of black economic empowerment from the side where you would expect it mm-hmm. expect it to come from. You, you know, so it's no longer an in thing, black economy. I don't know what is the in thing now. <laughs> you know? What is the? In thing? <laughs> Let's spend a minute on this. There must be something. But what it, is the in thing? It seemed to have fallen away. What is the end thing? What do people? What is the narrative? Especially in business, yeah. In, in terms of the empowerment of of, of of a black man, of a black man, because and woman, <laughs> because the EFF has been talking about economic liberation in our lifetime. Mm. Uh, they are see, they seem to be the only ones who talk about that. The ANC Youth League, from time to time, seem to yeah. you know, but it's not as strong. Uh, in, in such a way that it, it's moving towards government policy. Of course, from time to time, the president will say something about it, but it's there's no follow through. You know, yeah, it's like the policies yeah. of the ANC. So there's there's no there's no general common narrative yes. that rings in everyone's head. Like yeah. like during that time when those small businesses were exactly starting. remember. And then we had uh, and then the African Renaissance of Tabumbiki came in to feather. Mm. sort of you know prop up yeah. that that black economic uh, empowerment mm. thing. Um, so the radical economic transformation came with 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 Zuma, and you, you, we know what it's defined as yeah. now. You, you know, you're right in saying you almost wonder what is the narrative now. Yes, yeah. you, you, you know, because that now we 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 because since since Ramaphosa came in, so we, we were fed the nine went wasted years, mm. um, and Tumamina, mm. and. And you sit now and like, okay, what is actually happening now? <laughs> uh, uh, what what is this administration pushing? Web you is, can pick a few things, but it's there's no collective yeah narrative, especially where the empowerment of yes, uh, absolutely the, the previously disadvantaged. Because yes. I with with uh, with Zuma there was a uh, industrialization of uh, black of black people and yes. so forth. Yeah, we want yes. to make black industrialists, I and mean, those are words that came you out know, of that. Yeah. yeah, it looks like now we were just overshadowed by the state capture. Of course, um, it yeah. has been dominating. We get the, distracted. We're yeah, human. <laughs> yeah. So, so the music is still there. The music will always be there. Uh-huh. What happens is the, 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 there are certain waves that change, mm. or ways of doing business. So the recording industry has moved to using the digital space as a distribution channel. Yeah. There's a movie called Alcanti. Um, uh, Jennifer Lopez is one of the lead actors there, and uh, what's his name? Not uh, not Tony Bennett, but as short yeah. as Tony Bennett. Who is that? Um, he I'm... was he was actually Jennifer Lopez's actual wife. Uh, Mark Anthony, uh, hus- yeah, husband, yeah, Mark, Mark Anthony. Anthony. Yes, yes. yes, okay. So they are co-starring in this film. Alcante is about a big star from mm. Latin America, okay, who makes it big in in America. It's based on a true story. Uh, makes it big, especially within the Latin American community. Uh-huh. He makes it becomes big, you know. And there's somewhere just to get to the point. There's somewhere in the film where because he was big, mm. and now he is he's out of the spotlight. Is it because of time, or he's in a different place? Now this is how he captures yeah. it. Yeah, he says, "Well, it's the wave, man. Mm. It's the wave. There's a new wave." Yeah, we were the wave. 
Now that wave has passed, there's a new wave. But the music is always there. Uh. It's the wave that comes and goes. So we had a township pop wave, which was called, unfortunately, Bubblegum. Bubble gum. It was a wave that came and then it left and then the quieter wave came and left. Mm. The gom wave came yeah. and left. The Mapiano wave yeah. is now. So what's the next wave? We Let us ride this one. Because the music is there. That's what I'm saying. Let yeah. us ride this one. Mm. And let these young stars yeah. spend time in their bedrooms on Fruity Loops creating the next wave. Exactly. We will enjoy this wave right yeah. now. Yeah. So yeah. the music of business is thriving. Yeah. As I was mentioning earlier on, I saw something, uh, Sambro collected close to a billion rand, I think in 2021. Mm. The royalty collections. What are some of the, the biggest sources of these royalty collections? Obviously, the, the mainstream, yeah. radio, TV. Radio, it's mainly radio. Yeah. It's mainly radio because I think they take 5%, isn't it? They mm. get 5% of the profit. Yeah. And we know Highfield is the one that makes the most money. And, uh, and yeah, well, Prime Media and many others. Yes, yeah, over a billion. So yeah. 5% of that is quite... Uh, <laughs> it's quite substantial. It's quite subst so they make a lot of money, but they've started moving into into uh, phoning music promoters now. Yeah. I know because there's a, a concert I'm involved in and they phone the people and say, we see you doing this thing. Yeah. So license. Oh, but, but they have to. They have to. You know, yes. it's, it's their job. Yeah. They have to do that. As long as the money ends in the pockets of artists. And, and that's something that seems to have bugged you quite a bit about where money ends up, which is why yes. uh, the National Arts Council is something yeah. that you, you're yeah. forever looking into. Let's talk about the, the money the money that should end up. Where, where, what, what is the source of the money? Is it collection only? Because when you talk in National Arts Council, you're also talking government funding. Yeah. Well, the, the NAC, the, the source of the money of the NAC is 100% government. Mm -hmm. uh, from the national it's a government. donation. It's a grant. Yeah. You know, they give it to them to distribute to, 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 yes. to, 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 to artists. Uh, it's not a lot of money. It could be a lot of money. I think they are just below two, 200,000, 120, somewhere there, million. Yeah. Somewhere there. But 200, it, 200 million? No, 120 yes. million. That's, a, that's so quite substantial. Million. It's small. Okay. They, they can actually get more. <laughs> yes. They can actually get more if they had creative ideas of getting more. You know, Treasury doesn't shut the door at you. Yeah, they want to hear you uh, out. All they want to hear is, okay, how much do you want? And they uh. say, this is how much we want. What are you going to do with, man, with uh. this money? How does it contribute to the economy of the country? Mm -hmm. Where are the jobs in this thing? Mm -hmm. You know? So there's an element of laziness there in terms of presenting that. Yeah. And saying, you know, if you give us, I mean, South Korea, K-pop is big now. Of course. And with due respect, I'm not trying to disrespect here. But when we, when we talk about music talent, in comparison, I don't like to compare, uh, but compare South Korea with South Africa. Yeah. Music. No, we we are cut above. Yeah. Yeah. So we should be ashamed that K pop is making so much money and we with all the kind of talent mm. we have, we are not making that money. We should be ashamed of that. Especially the administrators. But when you say uh, we should be ashamed, it means we must first identify yeah. that as a problem. If you're not wearing yeah. pants, you must first notice. That you're not wearing yes, pants yes. Uh, before anybody else does. Yeah. So it, it it starts with with do we see our disability in this regard as a as a as a South Africa South African community, and and the disability to sport that something is wrong with the way we're looking at the arts. I think we cannot throw it uh, at the general public. We have to throw it at the administrators, uh. those who say to us, uh, "We are we are here to help you out." Mm. Now, if you're here to help me out, you must find ways of helping me out. You, and you should see the opportunities that will enable you to help me out mm. where, I, where I need help. So when you look at uh, government documents, South African arts, culture related documents, mm. they tell you that as early, 19, as, early as 1996, I think uh, 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 Jane Idu was uh, Minister, right, Minister of Communication at yeah. the time. I remember he traveled across Africa with Bob Mabena. Yeah. I remember that very well. <laughs> you were jealous. <laughs> well, I was a kid. I was very young then. <laughs> so there's a white paper on arts and culture. Yeah. Jane uh, uh, was chair of that uh, committee that uh -huh. was putting that white paper on arts and culture. And there's, there's a white paper on broadcasting, right? Both those papers, say, they say to you, there's a great potential of creating a lot of jobs. Mm. in these spaces the the arts 
mm-hmm. in general. So you 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 will include even broadcasting mm-hmm. uh, in in all of this. There are opportunities to create a lot of employment in these spaces. Mm-hmm. So that tells you that they do see they did see this thing. Mm-hmm. Again, you have those ANC policies that are beautiful but mm-hmm. never implemented. Mm-hmm. So we've had that problem where we know the potential. We recognize the potential. Mm-hmm. There's no willingness to go through with this. Hmm. There's just no willingness. I mean, um, Praveen Godan, when he was Minister of Finance, hmm. 2009, I remember very well, I was still publishing the magazine Music Mag then. Yeah. So in his budget speech, he says, the young people of South Africa have a lot of natural talent which we could use to create employment opportunities. Hmm. And foolish me, you know, like, He's got it. <laughs> why is that not foolish? You were right. No, and he was right. Yeah, I'm foolish because why was, was, was why was I excited? This was a politician talking. Yeah. It was just point scoring for a budget speech. Mm-hmm. It was nothing came out of that. Yeah. Mashadile tried with the um, Mzansi Golden Economy. But when you look at what's going on there, you you realize that it's not going far. Mm. And you ask yourself, why is it not going far? What have you noticed? It's the same thing that is happening at the National Arts Council. Yeah. Their interest is actually not the artist. There are other interests which are... For example? Because uh, here's, here's 120 million rands. There's easy You're to... You're supposed to give it to people. There's easy to move money around in the arts. Mm. It's very easy. You channel your friends. Yeah. You know... It's like the lotto thing. Oh yeah, yeah, the yeah, yeah. You know, so you channel your friends. So the idea is actually not to use the money to improve the arts. The idea is to be there to get as much as you can, mm. get out when you can, huh. leave it for an, somebody else to come in and probably do the same. Do the same. So, so these artists are just uh, useful. What is the money in essence? Because naturally they get it every year. Yeah. What is it meant to be really doing? Arts organizations, mm-hmm. uh, artists. Individuals they submit proposals there to say I want to do a community arts festival and, okay. I, and I need funding for this. Interestingly enough, there's something called uh, um, audience development. They also fund their hmm. audience development. Hmm. And I usually ask myself if you talk about audience development, I used to use this example with Kwaito. You see, Kwaito was big in the townships. Hmm. But do you remember where most of these festivals, quite a festivals, are happening? I remember. I remember from my experience, Moretele Park, the Benson and Hedges shows. Yes, and that, that's my experience. So I don't know what you're referring to. Well, but most of them were. What's that place in Centen? Uh, Park there. <laughs> yeah. So most of them are away from the township mm. where the core audience is. Mm. So the audience has to drive out to go and enjoy what they need to enjoy. But maybe they want to drive out. Yeah. But what if you are also neglecting an audience that doesn't want to drive out, they want mm. to enjoy their... Mm. All right, throw back. Look at the apartheid setup. The apartheid setup made sure that every African town has a town hall. Mm-hmm. And there's also some kind of a sport bar. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> so that's why African artists are not starving. Mm. Because they have performances, performance spaces where their audiences are. Wow. So they can have a tour and go and perform at in these places town halls <laughs> and, and make money. Yeah. If you want to take um, Judith Sipuma to, let me think of a township, mm. and you want to do an indoor show, you don't want to do outdoor. Mm. Where are you going to do it? In Mamelodi, you'll take Mamelodi community, community hall, but it's terribly tiny. And, and are, you, as a promoter, you're not going to make your There's no plan. parking, for example. Yes, yes. forget so there, it. There are too yeah. many disadvantages. Yeah. So we know the majority is black. We know the most talented in arts are black. Mm-hmm. So automatically, you should tell us the audience is mostly in the townships. Mm-hmm. That's for sure. Right? Are there performances space, spaces there for artists to go and perform for their audience right at their doorstep? No. No. So we to a theater, but that's one in a million. It's just one. When yeah. they built so to theater, I said, oh, wonderful. Why don't you replicate that? You know, a hundred thousand times. Yeah, replicate. Because you can. Yes, because yeah, you can build more of these things. Yeah. So that a Zama Jobe can say, I'm doing a township tour. Mm-hmm. 
by the end of that tour, they've generated enough income that they can stay home. Remember in the in the 80s and early 1990s, mm. uh, um, Anita Baker, uh, let me use Shari because I love Shari. Yeah. <laughs> so Shari will come with an album, the group Shari, mm -hmm. will come with an album and they will do a tour mm -hmm. on that album. So it will be a two-year, three-year tour. Mm. And after that two-year, three-year tour, you don't hear about them for the next four years, five years. And they come with another album. And you sit there like, I wonder what they're doing. What they're cooking, <laughs> you know? But they can afford to stay four years because they've worked two, three years. And in that two, three years, they've generated enough income to sustain them for another the next, while. Yeah. You know, so they can afford to perfect their art mm. in that time to try out different songs, different things. When they come out, they come up with, with an album and say, ooh, mm. you know, <laughs> this is beautiful. So to cut the long story short is the environment is not conducive mm. for artists to thrive in South Africa. Huh. It's far for, you know, I would say maybe it's 60%, I don't know, not even 60%, maybe 40%. It's not conducive yeah. for an artist because where do artists make their money? Uh, especially a performing artist. You make your money from performing. Mm -hmm. Performing your work. Yeah. That's where you make your money. More now than, than ever. More, because, more than because ever. Because record sales are what they become, you know, with, with digital downloads. Exactly. Yeah, so you're likely to make your money. You become famous so you can perform on stage and make cash. You know? Yeah. So, so you look at those things. So the, the National Arts Council has 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 to be involved in audience development mm. but for you to develop audiences you have to have sufficient uh, suitable spaces in where you develop this audience mm. you know proper acoustics and uh, all of that so that the professional artists feel comfortable to perform they it's not go going to compromise their quality and their sound yeah that they will give <laughs> that they will give to the to the audience so you see all those things with all this talent that we have we should you know where is the unemployment rate now? Is it is it yeah, 84? We lose track because it changes yeah. like the petrol price. With the kind of talent we have, we should not be at that percentage. Particularly youth unemployment. Yes, we Because that's where this they talent is, is brimming. Exactly. Yeah. We should not be at that 34%. Mm. Um, because a whole lot of young people could be involved in this economy mm. of the arts. Um, there are workshops we're doing in prison now arts workshops and one of the one of the one part of the workshop is film production yeah right so when you go there and you ask these kids to say okay we have these arts workshops we have film we have dance we have music we have theater we have visual art mm -hmm. we have fashion design sewing mm -hmm. right those that come for 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 theater drama most of them want to act mm -hmm. so we deliberately brought film production so the film production guy says, okay, let me explain to you the film production, the behind the scenes of stuff. And say, these are the jobs in film production. Mm -hmm. And it's actually more sustainable than being in front of camera because you have multiple opportunities sure. to, you know. So suddenly the, these young, uh, mostly young men, like, mm. oh, <laughs> you know. So they learn the technical stuff of the, mm. of the, of the, of the sector, you, you, you know. So you also have the administration where jobs are created there, you know. Yeah. A PR, producers, and, and all of mm, the accountants mm, mm. and all that. So there's a whole lot of, it's just, just artists. And in front of the camera, as it's called. Exactly. Yeah. So there are a lot of jobs that should be created in this space, and they are not created because the money is not going where it's supposed to go in terms of... Do, do, they, return, do they return the money back or it disappears? No, they... Uh, like, I return, return back as in treasury, sorry, we... We didn't have enough time to use this. And I'm being very politically correct. Yeah. We didn't have enough time to use this money this year. We have that 120 you gave us. Yeah. You can have it back. It should not even happen that you, you return money. Yeah. Uh, to, to That's why I'm asking if it when happens. there's so much need for it. it of course. It, it should not. So this is, I'll use this example. So this is what happens during the height of COVID. Mm. The National Arts Council gets 300 million to distribute uh, to the artists, to the artist relief funds and yeah. all that. So they get a lot of applications and, 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 and they come out and say, hey, we've run out of money, mm -hmm. right? So we can't give more money. Yeah. How? Jiggy Jiggy, we read a story. I, I get information, uh -huh. you know, like undeniable information uh -huh. that says there was 60 million rand. Uh -huh. Somewhere, Jay, <laughs> 60 million rand, that was not distributed. Uh. 
and they were saying, we don't have money. Yo. How heartless can you be? Mm. Right at the time when a lot of artists were not working. We're not working for a long time. And they were knocking at, at your door, you know. Knock, knock. Not only were they knocking, they were striking. Yeah. They were making no, noise. They were sleeping outside. there. Yes. Everybody you know? knows that. Yes. And you say, we don't have money. Jiggy Jiggy, you 60 million rand that you apparently, uh-huh. I, 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 I'm careful to say apparently, allegedly. Uh-huh. But I have a sworn affidavit that confirms that there was such money. Yeah. And it moved. Huh. Apparently, it moved. It was moved to the South African Reserve Bank. Whoa. Why would you move 60 million rand into the South African Reserve Bank when artists were saying, we are hungry? And you told them that there's no money. It just drives me bonkers. Yeah. Has anyone answered those very important questions? Well, you send the, uh, you try to be a good journalist. <laughs> so you send questions, you know, yeah. you even phone, you don't get answers because they think you are a lunatic, you know. <laughs> Most probably, I say, hey, this lunatic, who, who does he think he is? Yes. You know, we're running our show here, we're doing our thing, and he wants to spoil the fun uh, for us. We will do things the way we want to do because they've always been doing things the way they want to do mm. do them, especially where artists are, compl- uh, are, are concerned because I think they think uh, it's a playground mm. where they can play and do whatever they want to do because most artists are really not interested in administration. They just want to perform. And, and be creative. Yeah, and yeah. be creative. So yeah. this, this administration things, it just tires them. So they use that loophole <laughs> To loot. Yeah. They, go to, like, they won't see. They won't see. Let's just do our thing and, and, and all that. Mm. So it drives you mad. Yes, yes. When you know the potential of South African art. Yes. Uh, I don't know if you know this information. There's a <coughs> there's an organization in the US. It's called the Entertainment Industry Coalition. Okay. It lobbies for uh, for show business there. Mm, mm. In business terms. You know that South Korea. That's why South uh, K-pop is so big. South Korea, since 1962, were insisting on 100% South Korean music and film in their spaces. It was a policy by their leaders who decided we are going to prioritize who and what we are. That's why today South uh, Korea dominate Southeast Asia with soapies, music, mm. entertainment. It was a clear decision. Yeah, because, because they invested a lot uh, in that they pour in a lot of money into the thing because they 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 believed it will work mm. and as i said i'm not trying hunyata south korea mm. but when it comes to talent look at south africa man yeah ah <laughs> look at south africa imagine if we had a leadership that acknowledged that there's a potential here for economic liberation i often use the example of uh, imagine if it was not for music, where would Puse Kemi see um, Rebecca, many, Rebecca Malope, yeah. Notembi Mkwebane? Uh, where would Mduma Silela be? Mm. <laughs> the list is long. The list it's, is long. Yeah. You know, they are, most of them are living comfortable lives and it's thanks to this yeah. space. Now imagine how many people you can economically liberate out of the art. If you decided to take your personal issues out of it mm. and, and really invest in this thing. You know, of course, we, you, you have to be paid. You get paid a salary to do to that. To administer. To administer. And I don't think there's anything wrong if you also want to do something on the side, as long as you are fair yeah. in doing it. And there's no, <laughs> you know. Do nothing on the side. I say do nothing. No, on the do side. what you want to do on the side. Just don't disadvantage other kids. Yes, while you're doing that stuff. While you're doing that stuff. When I say do other stuff on the side, I mean you see an opportunity mm, mm. that you want to do legitimately. Yeah. You know, take that opportunity as long as you are not disadvantaging uh, people that you're supposed to serve. The money that's, that's raised, the yeah. money that's raised from royalties. Mm. Uh, you spoke of billions. Yeah, almost uh, a billion. Yeah, yes. Somewhere else. Does it end up in the right hands? Because I've, I've heard of lots of money that's just sitting. Yeah. I don't know how true this is. I mentioned literally like a rumor. <laughs> <laughs> I'm throwing it out like a rumor. <laughs> well, they, I forget the term. There's a term they use for that money. Yeah. Uh, undistributed funds. There something. you go. Yeah. Apparently, they can't find the composer or they can't identify the... Okay. The, uh, so the money sits somewhere and wait for <laughs> <laughs> Jesus to come back <laughs> and wait for p- people to come and claim the money. This year, what they did is they also published a list of people 
of okay. of royalties. I think it was last year mm. or early this year. A list of artists that they can't find or something like that they mm. can't get in touch of, which was a, a positive yeah, move. I absolutely, think. something that they should have done uh, all 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 along. Try to find these people. Mm. Say, hey, we've got your money, daughter. Yes, yes. Lele, you know, hey. collect your money. It's a million. You know, yes. so that's called serving your your clientele. Mm. If they are not coming, go to them. Yes, because you are generating money on their behalf. Your survival is dependent on mm, on, sa on saving them, saving them, and yeah. their survival. Yeah. So it's in your interest to look for them and say, "No, that's not twenty thousand yako." So I'm grandi. So kai nyugu yako. Kube kuchuni spans yako so that we collect more. And you, that's, you know, it. Well, that's yeah. what they should be doing. Yeah. That's what they should have done. They should have not come up with this thing of ah, there's not people are not claiming we'll put this money here and just continue as if nothing happened. And that's carried on for a long, long time. Yeah, it carried because. Yeah. Because the interest of the artist is not there. Huh. And I just want to, we just want to collect money. You know, we have bonuses and <laughs> we have jobs, you know, medical yeah. aid, <laughs> security. <laughs> hey, these artists, but <laughs> 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 And they're the reason you have all those you know, things. And we're just enjoying our life here, working full time, you know. Yeah. But they make it possible. Wow. For you to, to, to work full time. And going back to that point, does the money, most of it clearly doesn't end up where it's supposed to, as they're struggling to find the artists. But yeah. is, there, is there proper accountability of, of the music in South Africa? Is there proper accountability of a, a young man in a studio, in a bedroom, wrote a song, mm -hmm. got it registered properly, and is it monitored properly? All of those small details that have to do with me, David, playing a song on the radio today, and and does that that information ends up properly f filtering through to to the artist who that your song was played on two thousand this morning, and you made twenty cents. I wonder if the system has uh, improved. I know there are companies that track who played what when, mm -hmm. but I know that that's abroad. I don't know if we we have it here. Yeah. So the last time I checked here, Samro relies on Radio Two Thousand to send them a sheet of what that's they true. played. Yes, I know that. So if if Radio Two Thousand doesn't do that. Yes. What happened? The artist loses. And in terms of live performances, because whenever there's a live performance, that's why they are approaching music promoters now. There's a sheet that has to be filled in to say these are the songs that were performed so that whatever was collected in licensing rights, they, it's it's paid to the mm. appropriate people. So that used to happen a lot without those forms being, mm. uh, being filled in. So I see this proactiveness now. I think we must applaud Sambro. That there's something. There's something yeah, I see now. that proactiveness now where they phone promoters and say we see you are having a festival uh do you know that you have to the festival has to be licensed mm -hmm. you know and and uh, we so we you go and meet them and they explain the whole thing and then they, they give you this form and say you know you have to list the music that you've played at least there's proactiveness there there's another one and i was telling you earlier i opened a shop once and i suddenly got a <laughs> a, a call from uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and people saying that we want you must pay for the music you play in your shop yeah it's like, really I didn't know <laughs> <laughs> but that I, I think they're, they're doing a good job yes. they should have been done there, doing that a lot uh -huh. uh, in the past and let's hope they give the artist to the money the uh, money to the, the, money artist. To the artist exactly let's hope it ends in, yes. in the pockets of, 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 of artists here's, a, here's another one that has always been a, a nag for me about us South Africans and how we see our legends yeah. When I started this podcast, was was about talking to, uh, documenting people's stories. Yes. Yeah, and we lose a lot of people. Uh, that's just life. Uh, you know, the, you're guaranteed to die at some point. Yeah. Uh, and 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 you lose artists whose whose contribution not only to the politics of the of South Africa, but also to the to the arts of South Africa, yeah. to, who who have defined culture in some form yeah. in their in their little corner. And I always wonder, and I say that we, I feel we don't honor them enough. Mm. And, and maybe, maybe in a form of one concert and we move on, but even that doesn't seem to happen. Mm. And, and what has been your findings in, with regards to these type, this small little challenge of saying, here's a Huma Sikela, I don't know, a concert where we do, we, we're honoring his time and his life in South Africa. And it's, it's based at some state theater and it's a week long event where people can come and watch it and so forth. What's been your finding? Ooh. It's a we are we are event driven people from one event to to the next. Mm -hmm. uh, we 
there's a music conference I attended early this year and I, I suppose I was one of the oldest people there. <laughs> the young, I like what the young people were saying there in terms of those, those are who are behind the scenes now yeah. in, the, in the music business. And one of them said, uh, you know, the music does sell, but what keeps the music selling is the stories behind the music. Mm. Well, I, I hear you do this a lot on your show. Mm. You know, when the song was recorded, Just Ice does that a mm. lot. You give a, oh, so a brief... A, 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 those background. stories yeah. sell music, continuously sell music. Because suddenly somebody can connect with the song. Mm. They loved the song, but the story makes them even more mm. connected uh, to the song. So what we are not doing, which is one of the best ways of honoring artists, what we are not doing in South Africa is to document the stories behind the music. Yeah. You know, I tried to do that with Music Mag, so I, I speak to Paul Hanmer and say, meeting of the woman, tell me the story behind this song. Mm. So I did a bit of those, and I thought, because I was getting funding from Mino, which was, yeah. uh, uh, the National Arts Council was also contributing there, but it was mostly a Norwegian thing. So mm. the money was coming from the Norwegians, mm. mostly. So Music Mac got a bit of funding to do that, you know. Mm. And my hope, because I had started Music Mac inspired by a music, uh, by a magazine from Britain. They had done a an entire magazine on a group called The Smiths. Mm. I didn't know that group. Yes. <laughs> but for me, because I love music, So I see this magazine, The Smiths, and the entire magazine is about this group. And it's like, who are these guys? <laughs> For them to get an entire magazine. magazine yes. So I look at this thing and I'm like, hmm, this is very interesting. You know, uh, you don't wait for a book. Yes. You know, you put an entire magazine on a band. Mm. So the very first mag music mag was on Stimela. Wow. So half of that magazine was about Stimela. Mm. So I'd spoken to all the different members of the band Stimela. Mm. It's one of the ways of honoring them by documenting the story behind the band. What is it all about? Mm. What is the music all about? Because that also uh, and they gives David Mashabela some information to mm. use on his show. That's it, yeah. You know, uh, uh, radio, television people to also use. So we are feeding off each other. Mm. But it doesn't seem there's an appetite to fund those kind of things because, I, as I said, I'm not looking for a job. I'm just an independent guy who tries to do this and that. I don't have the money to focus on these things. Mm. I have bills to pay, you know. True. Kids have. So sometimes the, these things, uh, I will do them and sometimes it looks like I'm not consistent, but it's because I have to pay the bill. <laughs> and I have to do that which give me the money to of pay course. the bills. Yeah. Because what I do where the art is concerned has nothing to do, for me, it has nothing to do with becoming rich or generating money. Mm. If it does generate money, good. good oh, yeah. And I'm not yeah. saying I should not, but I can't force, force it to generate money. Mm. Mm. Because the purpose of me doing this is to tell the story. That's the primary purpose. But as, as, a, as a holistic mm. culture mm. of honoring, mm. a culture of, of mm -hmm. celebrating the greats before yeah. be, 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 be before us uh, not only by sampling their their melodies yeah. and their and their words mm. but but by uh, I, i was in i was in brazil once and i was um, i was in sao paulo a uh, banks and i don't know which particular bank uh, mm. had an arts exhi uh, exhibition but it was about musicians yes and these are musicians i don't know these are musicians who sing in in, mm. in a language i don't understand and i've never heard of them But I was impressed to walk through that exhibition to yeah. see that this is music related, yeah. and they're honoring uh, past and current musicians mm -hmm. at the same time. And I remember thinking, such a simple idea yeah. to implement in South Africa because mm. our history musically is extremely rich. Very rich. You know, it's not something we have to search really hard for. You mm. you look through my walls here; yes. you have enough references of mm. of the musicians that I'm mm. speaking of, mm. some past and some current. Yes. Uh, and and that's why I wonder, as a, a state of mind of South Africans, which obviously filters through very clearly in how government administers this thing as yes. well, mm -hmm. it doesn't seem like we're very big on celebrating those that created the platform. I think we take our artists uh, for granted too much. Yeah. We, we sort of doubt them. Hmm. That's a big word. To a certain degree, we... we And we like to compare them. Mm. With who? Uh, usually with American artists. Mm. 
And we forget that American artists are doing their thing, uh, which is what Miles told uh, Humus again. When you go to um, uh, in America, you probably came across mm-hmm. this information. So he tries to do what the Americans are doing. Of course, yeah, Miles he was, was rapping as well at know, some point. Yeah. <laughs> so my so Miles says, "Huey, Huey, <laughs> just do your thing, man. Yeah. You're never going to make it here trying to do what we're doing here. There's so many of us, and most of them are not making it. <laughs> yes. And you come from where you come from, and you want to do what we're doing here. Just do your <laughs> thing, man. Do your thing. You know. And. I think Fela also got that yeah. at some point. So you just do your thing, man. Because your thing is your thing. Nobody can do it. And you do your thing the way you do it, and you do it good, real good. People are going to love it. Yeah. You know, Fela still lives today. The music still lives because he did his thing the way he wanted to do it. That's true. So in most cases, that's why if you look at South, South African R&B, has never really made it because most of our South African R&B artists, they try to sound like American Mm-hmm. We can never beat them in there. No. Because that thing is like in... It's in their DNA. It's in their, their blood. DNA, yeah. Man, and <laughs> they leave that thing. And when I hear you have, a, you have another experience, mm. a, another lived experience, and yes, American music is also part of your lived experience. Mm. And, you know, it will come out in your music. But that accent is important. So it goes back mm. to the thing of trying <laughs> to get me out of my accent. Yes. That accent is is important because if you, so Miriam goes to Denmark, Switzerland, America. The accent mm. elevates her. There's no American who's going to do it. Never, even Kichwa. if they want it. You know, that's, so that's why Mbube is is pronounced so wrong. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Ngube, Mbube, whatever it is they say. And that song is so haunting, man. I know. That's why I make reference to it. Ooh. There's people who are. We've made millions from it and they shouldn't have. <laughs> and oh, have yeah, and their oh. families who are still fighting for it till yeah. today. So so you listen to that. Yeah. So you have something different to offer the American market. So Harry Belafonte will be interested. Mm. Jay-Z will be interested. That's why Harry Belafonte has a song, has music with Maria McCabe. Yeah. Yes. You know, so Jay-Z might be interested mm. because Jay-Z also wants to keep himself up there God. in the US and if he can so that's why Bo, Bo Benna Boy are mm. making it because they're bringing a different vibe into this pop yeah. thing and it's a Nigerian you know Juju Groovy yeah. you know, Afrobeat into hip hop or pop mm. or, or whatever so whoever works with Benna Boy sort of has a upper hand an upper hand yes. yeah. you, know, you know you know. so so if you go to America to sing like Americans and you think you're going to do a collaboration you know, like, but <laughs> I can always get so and so. Yeah, you know, I'm yeah. In, in my yeah. in, my, in my backyard. So, so you see, we get lost when we talk about music. <laughs> we just get lost. There's so much to to, yeah. to talk about music. Um, For me, it was something that that I, I've always appreciated about what the Americans have done, which is a clear demonstration of what we can do as well, is the ability to export culture. Yeah across the world. K-pop is a perfect example of that. Because K-pop, if you look at it, it's a it it steals from the boy band culture. Yes. Uh, that the Americans did so they well. Found, yeah. Yes, exactly. And they did so well and then dropped it. And then mm. the, the K-pop guys said, this is cool. Took let's it, take it and yeah. let's perfect it. Let's do it yeah. literally it, to, to a point where we can sell it back. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and, and 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 Americans did that by selling culture, hip hop yes, and, yes. and 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 all of that, and R and B and so forth. And I look at my piano now mm. and I see something that even Kwaito couldn't pull off yeah. become an international product. Mm-hmm. Uh, where you see uh, and particularly because we live in a digital age, we live in a social media age. Mm-hmm where these things move so quickly. Mm-hmm. And I, I, I look at it and I go back to the point you made about we don't respect the artists, we don't respect our arts, we don't see its potential to create jobs. Let's go back to a statements that were made many years ago and I say, I wonder why is it that we are, there's nothing worse than having electricity, but you have nothing to use that electricity <laughs> for. You don't have a kettle, you don't have anything. And yet there's power in your wall. And I feel that's the problem that we are facing right now. What do you say to to these tiny dynamics that we seem to be having? The worst thing about having had talent is when you're too old to use it and the time has passed or the wave is gone, using that reference. Yes, the wave is gone. Yeah. I think what makes America work is the American dream. Mm. So they work towards the American dream. 
So there's a focus there. Mm. We work towards the American dream. And the American dream, you can explain it anyhow you want, but the basic of the American dream is that if you have the talent, you have the willingness to work for it, yeah. the doors will be opened for you. Do we have that? You will get that American dream. Yeah. So so we have a lot of gatekeepers mm. In, mm. in South Africa. For what reason, I don't know. You know, Maybe it's a status thing. People want to be big. There's an interesting story about Port Rosa and uh, Linda Spear. Mm. I just want to use that as an example mm. of administration yeah. and talent. You know, Apparently, at some point, Linda Spear was getting paid more than Portloza, and Portloza was station manager. Mm. And apparently, Portloza was asked, but why are you paying this guy too much uh, more than more than me? More, more, more than what you are earning when you are his boss. Mm. You know, uh, oh, it was okay. Hey, Portloza apparently gave a very good answer. Mm. Portloza says, this guy makes me look good as a station manager. Mm. This guy brings numbers, you know. And uh, if it means he must be paid more than me, then let him be paid more than me because he's earning it. Mm -hmm. He's working for it. Yeah. So the fact that I'm his boss should not come into the picture and mess things up. Mm. For me, for him, for the station. We need to encourage his talent. Yes. No, mm. let's pay him. Yeah. You know, he's bringing the money in any case. He's bringing the numbers. Pay him. Yeah. If it's 100,000 more than what I'm paying, pay him. Mm -hmm. He's the talent. Now, Bordoza could grasp that because he comes from the very same microphone. True. He understands, he's an artist. He understands this, that there's no competition between me and Linda Sibia. Yeah, the administrator and, and the talent. There's no competition yeah. there. I've had my time as Upotloza, mm. you know, and now I've moved into the administration. Mm -hmm. You know, so, so it's Linda Sibia's time. And he's the thing, Yeah. you know, and he's bringing the money. Pay Linda Sibia, you know, irrespective mm. of whether I'm a boss. So, so we have that problem of bosses in the country, and this thing is big in the television, uh, in the television industry space. Because I speak to a lot of actors from time to time, a lot of money is made there, mm. especially uh, with these soapies, because uh, research after research says that the most watched television programs on television in mm. South Africa are South African. Yeah, and when you watch, I don't watch much TV, but from time to time I see ten. Just check who's what, mm, and mm. most of them I don't know because they look the same. <laughs> uh, now I'm sounding like white, white people. <laughs> uh, which I one? Get it. Don't worry, I have the same problem. I once attended a music awards, <laughs> and I will go back to the story. <laughs> and uh, and they called out a name, yeah. and this is at, at South African uh, awards, uh, yeah. whatever they're called. Yeah. And I was there, and they called out the name of someone to come and present yeah. an award. Yeah. The crowd went crazy. <laughs> I had never seen this person in my life, so. Don't worry, man. We're just too old. <laughs> and it's so sad that we've yeah. become this way. <laughs> you know. But anyway, yes. Yeah. You, you so saying. I rely on my daughter to update me. Oh, no, this one is so... Yeah. Oh, oh, this one also. What does she do? No, this one. Oh, mm. okay. Let me watch a bit of what she does. There you go. You see. Oh, okay. <laughs> ah, well. Anyway. So what I was saying was that there's a lot of money made there because you see there are, there are a lot of adverts, sponsorship and all that. But that money hardly filters to the talent. Well, they got paid a salary. I'm trying to argue like an administrator. This takes me to the minimum wage thing that mm. uh, President Cyril Ramaphosa negotiated at some point. And I'm saying, if you are able to negotiate a minimum wage, why are you... Some of us, we tried mathematics at some point in mm. high school. <laughs> so there was, there's this law that says, whatever you do on the left-hand side, you must do on the right-hand side. I think in accounting... In accounting, it applies. Yes. It applies. So if you can negotiate minimum wage, why are you no, not negotiating uh, minimum profit? As well. As well. Yeah. It's fairness, isn't it? <laughs> well, it can, it can still be argued. And this is a conversation I've had with actors as well, mm. that you don't, you don't argue after. Mm. You argue before contracts now. You don't mm. debate the contract after you've signed it. Right, let me give you a scenario. Yeah. This is a real story. Hmm. I'm not going to mention a name, but something is coming big around that. So you get called. Look, this is first season of this production. Hmm. We have a budget of a million rand. That's what we have. So we're going to pay you uh, a call fee of 3,000. That is 
come and shoot that mm-hmm. one with mm-hmm. Marvin Rand. So if you have uh, five shoots, that's three, six, nine. Mm-hmm. That's 15. That's 15. Yes. Yes. That's yeah. how much you've earned for that entire season mm-hmm. if you had five calls. 30,000. 40 or 60, right? So, so so they said to you, there's no budget, you know. But you see, you know, uh, if this thing works out, you know. Maybe that's what kills us. And, and, <laughs> and, and, and usually, the agent convinces the artist to uh. take the deal. So the artist takes the deal with the hope that when this thing starts working, there will be renegotiation of this thing because the money oh. is coming in now. Of course. It's like when a new artist signs yeah. in a record label. Yeah. Yeah. And they yeah. promise you the world. Yeah. You know? But I'm an actor as manager now, but Babula Liswa, I'm an agent up because the agent encourages you to take this thing because there's potential. Hey, you know, jobs are scarce, you know, that type of thing. Let's take it. So you take this thing. This thing becomes a hit. Mm. Advertisers come flooding in, you know? So, so, so the production makes. 25 million, mm. right? You spent a million to produce this thing. You make 25 million. You were paid 15,000. Mm. You were paid 15,000. You, you, you don't have beef about that mm. because nobody knew it would make that money. So you agreed that on that 15, on the basis of the million rent. Mm. Now you've made 25 million. You want second season of this thing. Yeah. So you come back and you say to me, Ish, you know, budgets are tight. <laughs> you know, we have to work on that 15,000 year last year. Yeah, foot, foot. So you see, there's no fairness here. So that's where we lose it. That's where we lose it yeah. because our greed, uh, our greed comes in our way and also the attitude, the disrespect of artists. Mm. I mean, I'm the boss here. I'm the chief executive or whatever I am. I'm mm. the one who called the show. I'm the executive producer. I'm, a, yeah. I'm the one who decides which show goes in, you know, which what and what. You're forgetting that you're not the actor. Mm. You are not the actual service. You're not Linda B. Yes, you are not the service. Yeah. You are not the product that brings the money in. Mm. You are a beneficiary of yeah. this thing. Mm. So take care of the goose that lays the golden egg. Of course. You, you know, you don't kill it. Mm. You're like, hey, I mean, hey, you brought 25 million and we spent a million on this thing. Mamel and Buffett, you have it. So it's okay, it's okay. It's okay, it's okay. Yeah, it's okay, it's okay. Yeah, it's okay, it's okay. Yeah, it's okay. I mean, I'm about to get a risk before you, isn't it? So, I mean, I'm going to get 15. Yes. But at it's least... It's still better than 15,000 rands. It's better. You've shared 10 million with us. You're still making the most, man. Mm. And you stand an opportunity to make 50 million or 100 million on this thing because now, remember, as much as I was, uh, as much as I was doing this thing out of passion, mm. now I'm further motivated by the fact that I'm earning a decent income out of this thing. So the more I give to this thing, it means that is the more I'm going to get out of this thing. Could it also be that we, as the artists now, we're coming in, at, you know, from a position of complete disadvantage? Yes. Well, we walk in yeah. literally with nothing. Mm. And, and we've been looking for opportunities for so long. Yeah. We've knocked on so many doors, and here's this one. Yeah. And you get that 15,000. And you've created debts because life happens. Yeah. You have to live. Yeah. Uh, this 15,000 is going to solve your problems. It, mm. Fine, it's short term, but it's going to solve your problems. And now, next season, your problems are worse because, yeah. you know, now you're a star. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and you're still in a taxi. Now you're big. And people are asking, why was it taxi? You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. And, and now you, or, or, or you bought a small car to avoid a taxi and created a debt because we call it yeah. buying, but it's not buying. Mm-hmm. You know, you, you are called out. Mm-hmm. And now you're facing new circumstances that are pushing you back to that table mm-hmm. where you will not be seated here, but you'll be taking what they drop on the on the floor. Yeah. And, and and maybe that's that's also a challenge because I don't even know how one would solve that. But you solve it from mm-hmm. from the perspective of the same administrators, the same producers, to have a kind heart. Of saying you're the star, the Poloza scenario. You're the star. I have to see you as a star. Yeah, and, and that's why I ask. With the scenario you painted, could it be that we just too poor to 
voiced this so loud enough that we're saying, like generations during that time when they said to hell with this. Uh, let me use the Entertainment Industry Coalition again of the U.S. Mm -hmm. Back in the, uh, I think in the 50s or 60s in, in America, uh, when they were still trying to build Hollywood, mm. uh, there's a lot of, uh, uh, what do you call them, the mafia element. There was a lot of mafia element back then. You know, the Italians, mm. Frank Sinatra and all that. And, and so there were elements who were, I would say, they were giving that space a bad name. Mm -hmm. Now, there are people who sat and looked at this thing and saw the potential of making serious money out of this thing. And they realized that these petty, you know, these petty things mm -hmm. are going to interfere with the bigger picture here. That's it. Petty things such as uh, ill-treating artists, paying them uh, mm -hmm. peanuts, uh, because this, this, this is the goose that lays the golden mm -hmm. egg. It needs to be protected. We are protecting our investment. Mm. So they were protecting their investment, these business people in the mm. in, in, in Hollywood. So they said, okay, we need to protect the talent. Because when the talent is protected and we, when the talent is earning enough, the talent will be will be willing to give its mm. all, mm -hmm. its best. And when they give their all, when they give their best we have more pleased customers as consumers. That's it. When we have more pleased uh, customers as consumers, it means we're making more money. Mm. Everybody's happy. It makes sense. Now here, yeah. we don't have that vision. We, we, you, you see, you have somebody who sits in an office who thinks that they are the only ones who have to be happy, mm. satisfied. <laughs> mm. The rest, go to David Utonzo every time I can go to the Prasmong Mang. I said, I'm going to get a contract here, man. I said, I'm going to come to an end. They like, like that. It's like you know us. <laughs> you've been, have you been around us long enough? Clearly. <laughs> it happens in many spaces. Yeah. So it happens on radio. You know, people mm. want to be worshipped in administrative offices. And and I don't understand what is the point. And I was using an example of one uh, administrator who's at the National Arts Council. And I said, you know, I think the problem with this guy is that when he was growing up, they were not saluting him. Mm. So now he wants to be saluted. It's payback time. Yeah, so he wants uh, to be saluted. Yeah. Okay, now we were saluted not because we were anything great, because they really stood. Yes. You yes. know, we were doing all sorts of things. So you people will salute you. Hey, hey, this one, we know. Yeah. So you have no hunger to be saluted today. Mm. You know, uh, it gives There's me, nothing to it. Yeah, it gives me no pleasure for somebody to call to call to me and beg, and I, I derive no pleasure in there. Yeah. You know, yeah. I I rather see you as an equal. Mm. And and if 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 as an artist, because I as I say, I see myself as an artist. If I talk to you as an artist, and I see that you have something much better to offer than me, I don't see a reason why I should be jealous about you. Mm. You know, mm. like hey, fit, hey, I shy that day. It's 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 a you can easily use a soccer analogy analogy where yes. soccer players, superstar players, just earn a lot of money, yeah, and they earn way more than the coaches. I'm sure of that, and there shouldn't be anything wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with it because they're the ones who bring the supporters, the money, the yes. fame, and yeah. and the and the everything. There shouldn't be a problem. So that's why soccer is thriving, mm. especially European uh, yeah. European football. That's why it's thriving because you know that you have to take care of that which. Interestingly, earlier we were talking about South African football. And I was saying, look, I'm not much of a soccer person. But there was a time when I used to watch soccer, mm. South African soccer. Like, watch oh, South African time. soccer, yeah. you know. And I say, the reason I was watching the soccer then, it's because there was something that was delivered on the field. Yeah. You knew Dr. Kumalo was lazy, you know. Mm. Uh, you knew now felt like a speed. Mm. But you knew, Hori, <laughs> Dr. Kumalo gets the ball. 95% of the time it's going to end up in a goal. And I, that was that was good. That was good enough. You know, it brought you in as a soccer fan. Yeah. Yeah. And and before, in fact, before the, the goal is scored, he would have done some dazzling thing that's like, hey, she's on. You want it right there. You know? <laughs> the way shoes Mushwe used to run, mm -hmm. uh, I, I also use an example with Jiris Kosan yeah. to say, you knew when Chiefs was playing Orlando Pirates, you knew when you thought that Chiefs is winning. You knew Jerus Kosana will come out from nowhere. Mm. What's that? Two minutes. I scored two goals. Hey, two goals, Pirates, he win there, and then the day is spoiled for, for Kaiser Chiefs fan. <laughs> but that was football. Yeah. There was art to it. There was passion. There was love. 
to eat. And they are not earning as much as no what is, is, is what players are earning now. But I think they felt taken care of yeah. at the time, mm. whichever way. But they felt taken care of. That's why they could give their best. Hey, now these ones are taken care of, but we're not, <laughs> we're, not, we're not getting much out of it. It's a dire situation. But coming back to the arts, I think when artists are taken care of, I've seen them, when they're, they're being taken care, mm. they give the best. Yeah. No, they give the best because they spend a lot of time uh, uh, with his guitar. You know, it's, it's always... Eh, Always. Mm. And what comes out of that at the end of the day? Because you're spending more time on this thing, perfecting yeah. it and, yeah. and, and, and all that. So the moment you don't worry about money issues as an artist, you that's when you give your best. Mm -hmm. Do you know, you know something that, that comes out quite a bit also is how streaming platforms, streaming services, they've reduced the, the cash that artists would make. Yes. Um, and look, I have no experience. I, I've always wondered about it. And musicians will tell you, we really need to perform because what used to be a CD sale is very different now. Yeah. I kind of had a good sense of how much money I was making back in those days because we sold uh, platinum and gold and all those things. Yeah, sure. I knew how much that was worth. Yeah. But right now, uh, the numbers are so all over the place or they're too little. As you said, the record labels, still record companies are still making the money. Mm. What happens to artists in the current scenario of digital distribution of music? Okay, this is what uh, happens. So, so before I came here, mm. um, so I phoned my peeps in the industry. Yeah. Uh, just to update myself. Mm. So I phoned one of my peeps who's in the publishing space. I said, Emran, tell me, what's going on, man? Mm. I want the background, you know, the behind the scenes mm. of the behind the scenes mm -hmm. of what's going on here. Yeah. So that's why I can say with confidence that the record companies still have their fingers in there. Mm -hmm. So he says to me, so they own this distribution, Spotify, you name them. Mm -hmm. they, these big companies, they own these things. So they make artists sign a contract that says, we will give you the figures mm -hmm. of how much has been generated out of your song. We will give you the figures. Mm -hmm. They control the numbers, yes. essentially. So you can't go to Spotify confirm we give you yeah we say to you fifty thousand mm. you can't go to Spotify so they can say to you fifty thousand meanwhile it's more half a million mm. or two million but you can't go to Spotify they own Spotify they have shares in Spotify somehow mm. so you're reliant on them giving you that information about what you have mm -hmm. so there's too much secrecy in the in show business in general, South African show business. And this secrecy is used to perpetuate exploitation. Mm. Because if no, if the left hand doesn't know what's happening in at the, yeah. the right hand, yeah. so you are not able to argue your case. Confidently. Confidently. Yeah. Because you don't know what's going on. So that's why, you know, keeping salaries of artists, uh, especially actors, uh, secret has nothing to do with the privacy no. in this country. It has nothing to do with the privacy of who earns how much. It has to do with the divide in rule and control, you know? Mm. Uh, because, I mean, in America, if we can know how much Will Smith is making a film, eh, what is so fussy about mm. here? <laughs> if, it's not, if, it has not, if it has nothing to do with the secrecy that allows the exploitation to continue. Because if, if you don't know... We're having a conversation as as the producer. I'm having a conversation with you as a Dao Moroka. And so and so, so Findawa doesn't know how much you are earning. Yes. And in that way, we are having our own private little thing. Yeah. I, I can divide the two of you exactly. and have separate conversations. Exactly. But also look at it this way. Uh, a film comes out in America or a, a series. Mm. They will tell you how much they're spending on that thing. Of course. They will tell tell you the, the box office sales. Uh, They'll tell you how much that's they film made. made. Yeah. You, you you know, there's no reason to be secretive about it. Yeah. You know, because you want fairness in this thing. You want this thing to try, thrive. Here, the reason why you keep this thing secret is because you don't want to pay people. Mm -hmm. You want to be the one who makes the money. Yeah. Uh, you see? So you don't want to pay the goose that lays the golden egg. So basically, let's put it as it is. Slavery continues in South Africa. Mm. 
and 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 it's everywhere. Uh, it's in the arts, show business itself. Because why would um, why would you commission a production, spend three million on it, and you want to keep it a secret? Mm. And why would you want to keep it uh, keep it a secret? How much advertising have you generated out of that particular? Mm. Make it public, you know. Uh, so that even the people who participate in that thing, they know that they are doing an excellent job mm -hmm. bringing mm -hmm. money into these things and compensate them mm -hmm. accordingly so that they become part of this thing, build this thing together. Mm -hmm. Basically, in those small pockets, we will build a thriving country where people are pay, paid fairly. There's clearly a lot of potential. Uh, it is unfortunate that it's not, it doesn't translate into reality. Yes. Uh, both in, in, in film, both in, in TV and also in music. music yes. Yeah. And and you, you, you sit and wonder in 2022 when we're recording this, that where where are we heading? Is is this likely to disappear into the ether and only a few will make the most money? Or what's likely to happen? Well, at the rate we're going, we we let me use the National Arts Council story again as mm -hmm. a classic example. You know, they go to the Portfolio Committee on Arts and Culture and they talk about how transparent they are mm. and how... <laughs> and I sit there and I laugh. And I'm transparent. <laughs> you can't ask simple... You can't answer simple questions. Mm. I mean, there was that uh, concert that they were trying to do in Deben and the National Arts Council actually poured some money into it, the RISE concert for the benefit of uh, flood victims. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. No, no, no. Not so long ago. No, not so long ago. So a journalist from the Daily Sun Phones mm. the National Arts Council. Uh, they want to ask about this festival because yes. you know it has been postponed. So, so if it has nothing to do with secrecy, and and then the National Arts Council says, no, 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 we'll come back to you. And then they contact their lawyers and say, we have a question here from the Daily Sun about this <laughs> arise concert. So they pay, they pay a lawyer, the, legal fees. Yeah, they pay legal fees for that thing. And I'm like, but what are you hiding? Uh. Why are you running to the lawyers? Yeah. So, so there's too much secrecy in this industry because there's a lot of rot mm. that is happening. So, so these contracts uh, try to hide this secrecy yeah. of exploitation that is going on. Eugene Tetter once called for a Truth and Reconciliation Commission. In the music business. Yeah, nobody took him serious. Now I say Truth and Reconciliation Commission for the entire South African show business. Yeah, probably necessary. Yeah, and let's call for more transparency. Yes. Um, how much is multi-choice making out of Gomorrah? Mm. <laughs> right? And then let's look at how much are the artists getting paid mm. out of Gomorrah? Mm. Huh. So be transparent. Make that public. So that we can tell if you are paying these people a fair, or no. a fair salary. Yeah. But you insist on keeping it secret because you want to make the most money and exploit it's likely to remain that way because it's it's basic uh, capitalism, yeah. where you know the the owner. You called it. I I took the risk. Yeah. I have to make the most, and you don't need to know how much it costs VW to make that car. It probably cost them twenty thousand rands, but they'll sell it to you for two hundred and fifty thousand rands, and you'll buy it. They, they can easily argue that it's how we run our business and buy it or not. Look, I don't have issues with capitalism, but the, the capitalism has well, capitalism has no human sense. You know? mm. No human sense in capitalism. Uh, it's robotic. Mm. Because you would not make that money without that artist. That's true. You need this artist to make this money. To be rude, I will say it's idiocy. Mm. short-sightedness and idiocy because without this talent you're not going to make that money mm. of course they like to use this ah, there are too many of them out there I was about to say you, they, you, are, we, are, we, are, we, are we as artists and I'm, I'm throwing myself in there for, for a second yeah. easily replaceable uh, it's easy to replace a, a, a person sitting in a, on a chair mm -hmm. behind that microphone yes a, a human the figure yes a human say the, structure yes the you human can structure. do that yeah, you can, replace yeah, you can throw another one yeah throw another one there. yeah but what is it that comes out of that mm. vessel yeah that is sitting behind that microphone that might be tricky to replace it's very it's always very tricky yeah it's always very tricky I mean when we talk radio now I'm very selective about who I listen to and when do I listen of course 
Why? Because you just have empty vessels in most spaces. Mm. You know, there's no that theater of the mind that I was talking about. Yeah. So if I want to hear theater of the mind, I know where to go. Mm. Mm. <laughs> this is radio. Yeah. You know, and the, the gelling of the music and the presentation and, mm. The, mm. and, you know. But why is it that with all of that you've described, mm. artists are still relatively easy to replace? Well, remember, we, we live in a world where hype is sold. Yeah. And hype is working so far, you know, in a commercial sense of, mm. of things. Hype, numbers, and all that. But there's no sustainability. Yeah. There's no sustainability. Let's look at, uh, let's look at radio, just as a quick example. Uh, look at how the Kaya FM lineup has changed mm. in a short space of time. Changed twice in year and a half. Very short space yeah. of time. Why? It tells you whatever change they made earlier on is not sustainable. Mm. And what was the change based on? It was based on that number thing that we can replace. Hmm. So there was no thinking about the sustainability of the service provided because you have to keep the listener tuned in for a particular amount of time hmm. and and it has to feed the next show and the show next show feeds the next show That's and it. all that. Yeah. So you have a hole where you are losing and when you lose in that hole, it affects the, the next show and the next show. So, so now... There's no sustainability there because the obsession was with the numbers. But you didn't look at what actually brought those numbers. Mm. Because if somebody is popular on YouTube, what makes them popular there? Mm. Are you going to be able to transfer YouTube to radio? Good question. Big question. It's, some, it, it's a different it's, platform. Yeah, completely. You may not want to accept that radio still remains a theater of the mind mm. as an administrator, but it still is. And there are a lot of radio people, radio passionate people out there, just listeners. Mm. You know, I think there's a group, a Radio 2000 group. There's groups, yeah. Radio, no, they are groups. Radio group, yeah. Yes, <laughs> they're groups on, uh, on Facebook. Yes. I've learned over yeah. time. Now you see. When we had challenges uh, with uh, Just Ice, I saw yeah. groups, all sorts of groups. <laughs> yes. <laughs> And those are your loyal customers. Yeah. Those are your, I think they call them, uh, uh, what do they call them? Your repeat customers. Mm -hmm. Those are the most reliable. That's where you make most of your money. Yeah. Repeat. They so, they will defend you. Yes, they in, will. In, in public. And they become your salespeople. Oh, yeah, the biggest salespeople. So they make your job easier yeah. to, to a large degree. So you need to take care. There might be a small number, mm. but you need to take care of that because that's where your life mm. is, you know, dependent on. Mm. Because these ones who come and go there's not, there's really, that's why you will have your figures going. Now you have 3 million and then the next thing you have 800. There's no sustainability there. True. So yeah. the advertiser uh, begins to have issues with you. Mm. To say, look, there's no sustainability in these numbers of yours. Mm. I mean, Heifeld has the lowest of numbers compared to most radio stations yeah. in this country. Yet they generate a lot of advertising mm -hmm. with those small numbers. So you must ask yourself about these small numbers. It's a loyal, small number of people that you can rely on mm. for your business. It's always there. So, Tina, we are still obsessed with big numbers, but are they sustainable? So, and that, that brings us go back to the point we made. Yeah. Replaceability becomes easy in that obsession. Yes. That says, Wagan is not generating enough. Yeah. He's not bringing enough numbers. Yeah. We're removing him quickly. Sfago Munye as born. So we are in a perpetual state of experimenting. It's a find a find. But you see, if you have Mashabela, mm. and Mashabela is a radio man, theater of the mind, mm. you're not getting the numbers you are looking for. With From him, yes. From him, yeah. right? Obviously, it's easy to blame Mashabela for it. Yeah, of course. But as an administrator, you must... Uh, um, I'm not going to mention this one because he's a close friend of mine. Mm. He does a radio show also, Afternoon Drive. Mm. Very good, good show. Mm. You know? And and we were having a conversation and I was breaking down his show. Mm. And I, say, I was saying to him, this is your show. Radio presenters don't like that, but carry on. Yeah. <laughs> so I was breaking it down. I said, this is your show. Yeah. This is the people who listen to your show. And these people have money. Mm. 
um, has your marketing people, PR people, have they given you a presentation of your show? Because it's their job to listen to, listen to their show and identify who listens to this show mm-hmm. and how to market this show. Mm-hmm. You, you know, how to sell this show. It's not my job to do that. No. It's not my job. No way. To do yeah. That. So the numbers that you have, they can be 50,000. It's still numbers that you can say. Mm. What is the character mm. of that 50,000, right? You find that uh, they, they earn way more than 100,000 people. Exactly. Born, uh, they are 50. Yes. Yes. So that's why Highfield is making money. Yeah. So we have laziness in some of our so-called black radio stations mm-hmm. when it comes to that. Mm-hmm. To say, Mashabela has 50,000 people. Who are these 50,000 people? Where do they work? What do they consume? And uh, how do we pitch these 50,000 people to the advertisers and all that? You know, because we can have, uh, you can have a million, but it's a million of what? Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's a million of what? So it's easy to blame Mashabela. Mm-hmm. But also the marketing should be coming in there to say, all right, uh, Mashabela has 50,000, but we would like him to have 150. Yeah. How do we help him get that 150? Because he has packaged something that appeals to 50,000 people. There that, might that, be, that means it's, it's something there. Yes. Yeah. There must be 50,000 more out there mm. that don't know about Mashabela. Yeah. All right. Maybe let's take the quick, uh, quick route billboard. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. You know? Yeah. But build a communications marketing strategy around Mashabela to be to to sell what he already has to offer, mm-hmm. because definitely he has something to offer. Why would those fifty thousand people keep coming back? Mm-hmm. And they keep coming back. Yeah. So why are you not selling? What do they say about that thing? It's be- better a, 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 a what a, a devil you know? Oh no, that no. can be. It's uh, better the bird you have in the hand than oh, yeah, the one. Oh, yeah, of course, yeah. That, the one that's flying there. Yes, yeah, that type of... for far. Yeah. So, yeah. Upi, you over 100,000 more when you have 50,000 that you are not utilizing. That's true. To your... Yeah, to your full potential. To your, to your benefit. So, it's, it's, it's laziness on the part of the administration. So I know I'm shooting myself on the foot. <laughs> <laughs> are you really? Yeah, but we must tell these things. Yes. Uh, as I said, I'm not looking for a job. Uh, but if you give it to me, I'll take it. No, of course. You, say, <laughs> you know, but 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 the administration likes to blame the on-air uh, talent for its failures. Yeah. Because remember, it's the administration that decides we're going to remove Mashabela and put in somebody, somebody else. else. Yes. And it backfires. And when it backfires, they want to blame you. Yeah. So they don't say, hey. We made a boob here. Mm. <laughs> I think we miscalculated. Yeah. You know? Well, well maybe that's what they say. Is we miscalculated by Harry Mashabela. Maybe we should get rid of it. <laughs> <laughs> that's the miscalculation. No. No. <laughs> but remember, you it's your responsibility as administrators to identify Mashabela's weaknesses and strengths. Yeah. And and help him out. Yeah, and help him out. And also to have a discussion with him. Mm. You know, because I, this person I'm, to, I'm talking about and, and, and I say to him, and he says to me, hey, Matlamu, you, you, you won't believe, you know, I've never had a snoop session. Mm. <laughs> and I, but now you've been doing that show for about three years now. Yeah. So you're saying in three years. I can have... guess who it is, but don't worry. <laughs> I won't. <laughs> now that you said that. You know, so I'm yes. like, Imran, are you saying you haven't had a snoop session yeah. in three years? He says, no, I haven't. So nobody has given you feedback. Basically, that's what of it what is. What you're doing. Nobody has given you feedback of what you are doing. Yes. So, oh no, no, I go on the one. I go good. I couldn't wait. No, it's very, it's very, it's very, it's very. Oh, sharp, sharp. No, 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 I'm not. It's very. You know, basically, you are operating in the dark. Yeah. I'm gonna mention this name, and and you don't have to say yes or no. Yeah. Well, we can delete it if you want. It has so got done. But let's carry on. <laughs> <laughs> By saying. the way, it's, it's one of my favorite <laughs> afternoon drive shows. Yeah. Beautiful radio, man. Yeah. Beautiful radio. And and numbers, you, you see, as I said, man, administrators are failing us. Mm. Generally in show business in South Africa, be yeah. it on radio, television, music, administrators are failing us because there's too much obsession with themselves. Yeah. With their status, with the I'm the programs manager, I'm the station manager, mm. I'm the I'm the one record label executive. Yeah. I'm and the... and how do you how do you need to show me? Yeah no. I hire and fire. In fact I can fire this Mashabela. 
<laughs> on fire, man. I've realized he doesn't respect me. <laughs> oh, boy. And I'm like, but... Yeah. Mashallah is doing his thing and he's good <laughs> at it. Why do you have beef? Do you envy him? Mm. Okay, ask him to teach you hair. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, let him be. Yeah. Do you know, in, in, in some of your writings, I come across something called the... Uh, Bonga Nati Mzanzi Orchestra. <laughs> no, I'm curious. What is that? No. It comes across a lot in your in your writing. And I'm curious, what is that Bonga Nati Mzanzi Orchestra or something like that? Yeah, I mean, I'm just having fun with uh, Minister Nati Mteto. Oh, okay. And, uh, and uh, Bonga Tembe. You okay. Know, you know, there's this uh, uh, Mzanzi what what orchestra mm. remember there was a flag thing 22 yeah. million and something no, no, yeah. and then and then it comes out there's this orchestra where there's about 54 million that has been poured into that you know mm. and uh, and when you look at the behind the scenes of what's going on there you know there was a million that came out for feasibility study but we can't trace the report for that feasibility <laughs> study and then there's a so a, did they count the roof and they, <laughs> you, you know, you know, you count the roofs, hey, and then it's worth two hundred million. Yeah, 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 a million. And then there's this orchestra, and there's this, there's a they're trying to justify why these fifty four million. You know, it's going to social cohesion and all that. But you have orchestras all over the place, and and you're like, okay, but why is this one special? You know, the money is set aside specially for this one. Yeah. So that's why I'm calling it Bonganati. Okay, you're bringing the two together. <laughs> I'm bringing the two because it's like it's the minister's thing, you know. It looks like it's the minister's thing, and uh, it looks like Bongani Tembe is close to the minister. So, get orchestra, get Bonganati orchestra, some Zanzi. But they will tell us it's Mzansi uh, orchestra. Yes, you now know? it makes sense. <laughs> ah, it's Bonganati. So, it's that thing I was telling you that I write the way I want to write. You yes. Know? It's, so, I put things together, dismantle them, and if I feel like creating a new way to create it and move along. <laughs> you feel like using Spidori, you hold it in there. Ah, hold it in there. Because I'm a, I'm a cosmopolitan South African. Yes. I'm, a, I'm a cosmopolitan South African. Yeah. I've come into contact with a lot of languages, slang. Mm, and, mm. And it's part of me. It's part of my life. And I ask myself, but why can't I write like that? Yeah, the way you, the way you speak or the way you, you know language. Yes. And the way I hear people talk. Yes. You know, there's a friend of mine I grew up with from when we were toddlers. Yeah. That guy is such a storyteller. And I keep saying to him, you know, you're so good at, at storytelling. He says, I oh, know, man. So sometimes I borrow from him. Okay. The way he speaks. Yes. You know, so I'll use some of his. <laughs> and I'll say, hey, I'm pleasurizing you here. You know, <laughs> I'm trying to speak like you because it's so fascinating the way yeah. he, he, he's very exaggerating mm, the way he tells mm. stories. <laughs> yeah, yes, yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> when you look at the, the arts um, and as, as, as we conclude and if you were Nati Bonga <laughs> Nati <laughs> if you were Nati Mtetwa and you had this important role yeah. which I think those roles belong to people who are practitioners yeah. and people who are active mm. in it people who interact much closer to it um, and if you were in that role, what were some of the most immediate things that you would you would effect change in? Almost immediately, you study tomorrow. Like uh, <laughs> uh, 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 Premier Payazal is he's already busy. Yeah, like, be easy. He yeah. met he met the police yeah. cell. Yeah. yeah. So what would you be doing? Well, the first thing, uh, one of the first thing, I will I will demand I will demand transparency. Yeah. Let's have let's let's have transparency. Let's have fairness, right? And secondly. Uh, those who call themselves strategists and clever people in the hey you see now in the arts in the arts mm -hmm. you know who who say they have the solutions i don't need a conference for that mm -hmm. there are already enough documents so as an administrator all you do is you read these documents you pick up mm -hmm. good things in those things and say right that thing i was talking about and you say you call the people and you say, how much do you think we need for this? Mm. You know, put costs to these things. What 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 are the job creation implications of mm. these things? You know, poverty reduction and, mm. and all that. How many jobs can we create here? And that, how are we going to create these jobs? Yeah. Right? So they, they cost it. So everybody cost their thing. Mm. And then we summarize it into a presentable thing and say, okay, we need 500 billion rand. Mm -hmm. 
So we go to Treasury and say, Treasury, this is what we have done because we already have these reports. So mm. we've taken from these reports and our estimation is that this is how much mm. we're going to contribute into the economy of the country. This is how much, how many jobs we are going to create. And this is how we intend to implement because that's very important. Yeah. This is how we intend to implement this strategy. Mm. It's going to take us 10 years to start seeing this or four years to start seeing this. Mm. And once you get that money, you, you don't get to that point where you suddenly see your shares there. <laughs> <laughs> then government officials see shares. Yeah, so so only shareholders. Money. <laughs> uh, so open the shares because interesting story when some organization in the arts was formed. So five million gets in, and when five million gets in, apparently some fat belly in the music industry says, "Eva fetu kya utla bari chale teikeni." And he's very serious. It's not like he's joking. This yeah. is not a joke. Yeah. Out of our five meter again. So, Tina Sidlago, Pila. So, so, how profit? I don't much. How is so spun? Yeah. How is so spun? When I saw what I heard. Who's so spun? I hope that's a joke. <laughs> no, it's not. It's it's true story. Yes. True story. It's not a it's not a joke. So, so. I don't want to be in that position, mm. but I wish we could have people like those in those positions. I'll use a classic example of what I mean by this, so that, and I'm not, I'm not a saint. I'm not, mm. you know, mm. but I'll use this example. So I got a contract in 2015 to do a music talent search in the Eastern Cape okay. uh, from Transnet. Mm. Good money, two million. I, I got from them. Mm. I was entitled to 25 percent of that. Mm. I think came to about 300, 360, so money. Yeah, 360,000. I was entitled to that mm. amount of money. So we go to the Cape Town, to, to the Northern Cape. It's me, Slilo Sluta, Bianca Lehrange. Mm. Um, he's an orchestra conductor, mm. white guy. But we go from the entire Northern Cape, which is a country on its own, bigger than Germany, bigger than mm. Israel. Mm. So we go around the entire Northern Cape doing auditions. Contractually, uh, I can take three finalists to Kimberley okay. for the final showcase and, yeah. you know, and all that. So we do this entire Northern Cape and then we get to Kimberley. There are 11 finalists. Oh. So they have to choose three finalists. Yeah. For this thing. So I've been watching from time to time when they perform. So Slilo comes to me and says, hey, Murano, we have a problem here. Mm. What's the story? He says, we have 11 kids here and all of them are good. Mm. I know the mandate is that we must take three to Kimbali to the final. But we have 11 and all of them are good. Yeah. So I say, okay, Slayer, what do you want to do? Mm. He says, no, I know cost. No, no, no. What do you want to do? When I, what do you want to do? Leave cost out of it. Forget about the cost. When I, what do you want to do? Well, I've seen these kids. You know, very talented. Mm. So Slider says, look, we would like to be with them for the whole week. Workshop them the mm. whole week. Mm. And let all of them perform at the final. I said, well, okay. So that's what you want to do. He says, yes, I'm okay. Uh, obviously, that the budget mm. allocated does not fit that. Mm -mm. So I, I make a call to a guy who is in the Northern Cape. I said to him, look, man, um, we need to get all these kids, 11 of them, to Kimberley. Mm. and they Slilo wants them here for a week. You know? Now, remember, now Slilo is moving beyond... Mm, the call of duty. What his end. Yes, exactly. Scope of work yeah. that he was paid for. So he's moving beyond now. He's saying, I'm, I want to work with all of them. Yeah. yeah. Bianca also agrees. You know, they want to work with all of them. So say, okay, it's fine. So they help to bring all these kids here. So we have to... Uh, now accommodate an extra nine people, oh, you feed an extra nine people, uh -huh. you know, all those things. Mm. The money has to come some, from somewhere. The budget that I got does not accommodate that. Jeez. So I had to dip into that 360,000, yeah, which I'm entitled yeah. to. Uh -huh. You know, I could have said, no, contractually, it's three finalists, we stick to that. And, mm. and I, I say, I'm an idiot. But what inspired the decision to do that? Because you, as you said, you could have said, no. Yeah, look, I, you know, the let's have more 
people who are talented exposed to opportunities so that they can make something out of their talent. Mm -hmm. Instead of, you see, we're busy talking to you at colleges now and all sorts of things. So we want to drive kids there. Mm -hmm. Some of them don't want to go there. And because they are not feeling this thing. No. Some of them are dancers, some of them are musicians, some of them are poets. Some are, and they, make a, they can make a living out of that. So if you allow them the space to do that, at least something will come out of it. So I was driven by that. Yeah. To say, ah, well, I can hold on to this money, but what is it going to do for me? Mm. Of yeah, course. You, a, you know. It's money, it'll make a difference. But there's a kid yeah. who will never move beyond where they are. Yes, and, and I would have loved to have that opportunity as a, as a kid. Mm. but I never had it yeah. uh, I was like ah, so I, let's just do this thing you know just do it and then we we paid for everything and we did the final and it was nice yeah. it felt good yeah I can imagine it felt good it, was, <laughs> it feels good if we, we lived a life of, of yeah. looking for those good feelings it feels good money you can always make there are always ways to make money yeah, yeah. yeah. a project at some point will come and you make good money out of it mm. you we can slice this one until the cows come home. Yeah, we can. I have, I appreciate the time you've given us. Right. Thanks, yeah. Sharon. Because it's a it's a tricky space. It's a an unfortunate space. It's when you're looking at it from someone who is a player. Because I play, you know, interesting role in it. Yeah. Uh, I play the content. Yeah. I I hire musicians and put them on stage. Mm -hmm. We put cameras in front of them and and do TV shows with them. And yet you see their challenges yeah. and mostly financial and so forth. And it's always so unfortunate when you see it and then and, and you look at you look at it again and say, the consumers see it very differently as well. Because the industry is so glamorous. Mm -hmm. It's so pretty, it's so TV, unemal. Yeah. And the reality is very different. And it, it it's always concerning. That yes, it may not necessarily be an industry that makes rich people, but it must at least give you a, li a life. But do you, do you see where this secrecy work? Yeah. Now? yeah. Because the consumer does not have enough in information to make an informed, informed thought, ju judgment about it. So the perception out there is that artists are killing it. Yeah. Okay, let's, let's also make something clear. There are artists who are killing it. But not all of them. Not all of them. Especially is, is, is it most of them? That's another question. Look at the wave now. Uh -huh. Right? So if you look at the wave now, you will see who is making money. Mm. Maporisa. Yes. Oh, he's, he's clearly making money. Yeah. Clearly, yeah. clearly, clearly making money. You know, uh, black coffee. Mm. You know, mm. They are making money. But how many are they? Relative to the total number. Yeah, relative of, to the total number yeah. of, of artists. So you, you can go on television also and you will see... Um, there are a couple that look like they're making money. I don't know if they're making money, but from what I hear, they are making money. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's only those. Mm -hmm. And then the rest, hey. you know, are not. So the few are used to prop up this lie that there's a lot of money uh, that yeah. artists in general are making. So these are fr they are used as fronts, mm, you know, for lack mm. of a better word. Oh, yes. So they are used as fronts to say, no, there's a lot of money being made here. Get influence. <laughs> yes, you know. <laughs> but in reality, when you hear stories, like stories, uh. true stories, you realize, oh, no, man, people are being exploited here, big yeah. time. Mm. A lot of them. Uh, <laughs> and most of them are talented. Mm. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. The, oh, their only problem is that they voice out their dissatisfaction. Yeah. And not everybody likes that. Yeah, not everybody likes that. And and then you have someone who, well, there's there is a you, you, there's something there, but they are not wow. Yeah. They are not Oscar Ish. material. Uh -huh. So we, most Oscar material artists in this country are treated like trash. Oscar, yes, uh, you know, Grammy, Grammy. Yes, yes. Most of them are treated like like trash. Yeah, we're talking about like serious export mm, material. material now. Yeah, you know, we're not talking about uh, people who are popular popular in South Africa, but if you were to throw them in Hollywood, mm. they will they will thrive. You know, I've been lucky to have spoken to many of them on that very chair, yeah. and yeah. 
And I look at them and I say, man, I wish I was Martin Scorsese. <laughs> I wish I was, I was a big director somewhere who would make these things. Woody Allen. You know what I mean? Because you, know, yeah, you look at them and say, even in our conversation, and because I, I, my brain does that. And you start, as you're telling the stories, I'm imagining these people and I'm yeah. saying, wow, man, the talent that this person has Too much. can go far. Too much. It's sad, you know, great, great, great legends, artists, um, Uh, who 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 are insulted in this country yeah. kind of pay that that they get i mean that story of vusitanda now mm. uh, you know when i saw that story and i'm like damn yes. you know vusitanda you may not know him but you and you may not know a lot of what he has done but mzinwezinziswa should be your no it's um should be your it's a moment in history yes yeah, it's a moment in cultural south african history no uh, no doubt yeah it's typical township humor he has a phrase that he anybody says it you know it's his yeah and and that is a that is a contribution to to culture you know, somebody like that man we should be paying him very well yeah do you know i once i was in in kzn it's many years ago And uh, I needed to go to the shop to buy food. I was there for for SABC project, and it was around I don't know seven eight in the evening. I wanted to get into Steers. I would go elim now. The shop doesn't allow people to walk in. Okay. Uh, uh, who are just there to watch TV, mm. and they're there to watch Muzin Wazinzi. <laughs> <laughs> Good call him young. Like See, people are not allowed. Classy. So so you have to wait for that show to end and no. then you can walk in. No, Emsinen is what Emsinen is is a classic. Yeah. I mean it's like good is nice. No, of course. Those are classics, man. Yeah. And 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 there are quite a number of them. Ah, there's lots. But you pull from yeah. from the past and and you're like, "Damn, you know, this showed us what we can do as a country." If we all put our hands yeah. on deck and try to and make Emsin, a difference. Emsinen is always a very low budget mm, production. production even when you watch it you see it was yeah it was yeah. i know a guy who used to work the administration uh, since moved to the uk he used to tell me how much he was making yeah. and the budget <laughs> how small it is but it was classic man mm. it was simple straight to the point yeah. you no know? <laughs> and less left a lasting impression on a generation like you and you and i yeah, yeah. so people like those i mean In fact, I was asking about Chirwali the other day. Mm-hmm. Uh, what is real name? I forgot it. I was asking about him. Mm-hmm. And I said, you know, I can I haven't he's done a lot of theater mm-hmm. mostly, you know. That's the role I know him on TV Ms in Wizenties. Yeah. And he's South African. Yeah. And yet he's done it so well. But he nails the Malawian the Malawian accent. Accent. <laughs> and I'm like it takes great talent to yeah to do pull the, that off. <laughs> you believe that uh, this guy Chirwali is, is Malawian. Yeah, he speaks Chichewa. <laughs> I is South African, man. <laughs> And he nails this thing. I I didn't know. I, I thought he was Malawian all this time. No, <laughs> until he, you said it. No, he was married to Dieke Zengosi. Oh yes, yes. Yes, they they, they were married. Huh. Uh, he's he's South African. Wow. South African. He nails it. I'm like <laughs> And you see some of these people and they disappear. Mm. I remember FNB sponsored a program um of a series of films uh when I was still at Sunday World. Mm. Uh Hotlines. Yeah. I remember called. that. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Hotlines. So I watched the entire series. Mm. And out of that entire series I picked one person there, Nozi Pongelemba. Yeah. I was like Look, Mashavela apart from her being beautiful, I mean, can can one, I'm like, you know. Who we deal is you. Can one, you know, apart from her. But I saw the heart and the passion mm. for the art. Yeah. And I saw a potential there. Mm. Guess what? She's behind the scenes now. Isn't it because she likes it more? Or you're saying if if her in front of the scenes talent was encouraged she would have flourished she would have flourished also if she saw because remember as an artist at some point you are caught between a rock and a hard place you have to decide mm. am i going to follow this passion or am i going to think about the bills yeah feed the family i don't know what what space she was in when mm. she took the decision to go behind the scene yeah 
irrespective of what was going on, but it's a talent lost. True. In front of screen. A great yeah. talent lost. Yeah. Such that if the conditions were conducive, mm. chances we would have not lost that talent to, to behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. So you find that you lose talent to behind the scenes because you just, you know, I love this thing. I want to do it, but I know it's going to kill me. That's it. That's it. I, I, I'll, I'll stick around it. Yes. yes. You so know, I don't completely lose. Yeah, let me do. Yeah. At least I'm still. Mm -hmm. I'm still here. Yeah. You know, but I would have loved to do this thing in front of camera. And, yeah. And all, yeah. But I see it's not going to work. So let me just, I think that's a talent lost. Nozi Ponkelemba, front of screen, headlines, that thing I remember. Mm. She she came out um, beautiful because there's there's another film she did. Uh, it was a Lesotho film. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe it's because I bought the DVD. Oh, I don't know what DVD. <laughs> oh, yeah. I haven't seen a DVD play in a bit, but yes, I yeah, hear you. you know, I, she she appears there. She uh. she's a younger sister to an older sister who I think was working in Johannesburg and then goes back to Lesotho because she's sick and now she's because she's got HIV AIDS and she has oh, to take yes, care of yes. the sister. I forget the name of the film. Brilliant. She's yeah. continues to be brilliant in that film. So we've lost that talent to behind mm. the scenes. Eish. Now you can imagine there's a lot of talent, art talent that is in corporate offices. Yeah, in South Africa, whether they're singers or dancers or they are actors, whatever yes. you name them. Uh, why? Because they, you know, they realize that their sanity is at stake. Mm. You will go bonkers, <laughs> you will, you <laughs> waiting for opportunity. Uh, you will lose it in this industry. There's a. You said we are closing. In closing, no. <laughs> <laughs> There's a South African artist has been around for quite a long time. Worked Lubo Huma Sikela. You name them. Mm. I first got her own record uh, records yeah. brilliant brilliant very sad story yeah what happened very very sad very sad story you know she gets calls down they are offering her this or that gig and they are insulting her mm. basically mm. Ah, you got 15,000 hey. you sit and listen to these stories now remember when they're giving her fifteen thousand, there's a band to be paid. These are people who mm. play with bands. Yes. They don't use CDs. No, yeah, and yeah, and, and computers. So <laughs> how much is he, is she going to pay her band from mm, that? About fifteen thousand. So the public needs to understand that when artists say I am broke, it's not because yes, but they about junk chalet and waste it and all that. It's not all of them. Mm. It's because they're being exploited. They are being insulted. Let me put it that way. They mm. are People spit on their face. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I went, I man, you're no longer relevant. It goes Ish. back to that thing you were talking about, honoring. Yeah. So when you approach somebody like that and give them a decent salary, you are honoring them. Yeah. yeah. It's a way of honoring them. You don't say to them, ah, you are no longer popular. Uh, so spendy three thousand. Yeah, you are no longer popular. Smang Mang is is the one who's bringing the crowd. Mm, where now nah, mm. he no, you look at this person and say, "You've contributed mm, to the arts. What is your fee?" Yeah, and they say one hundred and fifty. Say, yeah, no, I'd like to pay you one hundred and fifty, but I don't have. Mm. How about ninety? Mm -hmm. It's still a decent fee. That's true. You know, yeah. so you pay them. So that they also don't come there and compromise their art CD. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> and what's likely to happen. So they come with the full band. Yeah. And you've honored them by respecting their art. So, so I spend a lot of time with artists and I know there are those who squander money. Mm, mm. But most of them, they are not squandering money. They just don't have it. Yeah. Thanks, Michelle. Please cock. Hey, thank you, man. Stay passionate about the arts. Uh, we need you as Minister of Arts in the next four years. Uh, that will be boring. <laughs> <laughs> you can make it exciting. Damn, you can make it exciting. Get more like a pretty short. Yes. It's time. And I want to let all style It's time. We changed the, the narrative. <laughs> I'll give you more like now, man. We need a concert here. Yeah, then they throw one. Yeah, we throw a concert. I'll give you the Yeah, you now you had fun. Let's start working. That's it. <laughs> Let's work. We need to make this thing work. Artists must eat. We <laughs> must also eat. Everybody must eat, in fact. <laughs> I mean, 
You can't leave Usaji. I like that. Everybody, Everybody must, must eat. That, there's a tweet for you. Everybody must eat. All right. Mm. Thank you very much, Atiyam. Thanks, Michelle. It's grand. There we have it. King King David Studio Podcast.